Hello. Now, what I'm going to talk about today is very disturbing. And I want people to put their own health first. It is very disturbing. Okay, I've just got to plug this in. It's about all you coming up. And about the vile creature that has been charged on a capital murder charge in Texas. So this case falls in line for the death penalty. Now, I've heard some people say death penalty, yes, get him done. But I've heard them say, no, put him in prison, put him in general pop. Right? Let them deal with him. But I don't know. I think he survived in general population. And why should the you Americans, the Americans over there, pay for him to be sitting in a cell, getting internet, chatting to women online, whatever they want to do? Why? I'm from the UK, and I think if there's enough evidence to prove he killed her in the manner that he did, then he should go on death row. Simple as. He shouldn't be around people ever again. And if that means sitting there for 20 years before he actually gets a big needle, then let him sit there for 20 years. I don't think he should be around people, full stop. I don't think he should have all the privileges that come in general population. I really don't. 
anyway i've got a, several videos to watch two of them are from nancy grace nancy grace i love this woman She holds nothing back. She doesn't mean so words, and she says it as she sees it. And there's two videos. One of them has got team. The organizer, the group organizer. What was his name? I think of his name. All I know is Tim. Is the group organizer of Ecusit. And you'll have him talking on there. And as I said, this is all trigger warning. Trigger warning. Well, I'm going to put it up the top up there. And I'm also going to put it along the bottom. And believe me, I've got it ready to go for trigger warnings galore. As I said, if this is too much, if you find it getting too much for you, please click off, get up, walk away, go and have a cup of coffee, go and do some cleaning, do some ironing, whatever it calms you down, you do it. Right? So always take your own health into consideration here. <sighs> right. First of all, I've got a, a video of one of the young girls that was one of his, I'd say, not his first. I reckon he's had many girls, but they're just too scared to come forward or too scared to have said anything. So we're going to look at this. And um, listen to this. Now, please remember what I've said. This is this is very trigger warning. In fact, I've got a, a little sign. It's warning. That's a warning sign. Do not go any further if you cannot take what you're going to hear. Okay, thank you. We will continue. Please remember. This is one, just one of the, it says first child, a man charged with all the coming of murder. Right? But I don't think that evil piece of S, this was his first child. It wasn't his second time, his third time. I think there are many more girls out there. You don't know what's happened to them. Sometimes when we have incidents like this, they can tell, and if they tell the parents and the parents don't believe them, or if they don't tell the parents, they leave with that. And then as they get older, they turn to alcohol, they turn to drugs, anything to kill the pain in their head. The thought of what happened to them. Anything that would have killed that pain. So we don't know if anyone has died from since this. We don't know. But I would say if there's any young girls out there, be it 10 years ago, 20 years ago, come forward, speak out. They may not be able to help you in a case against him, but at least you can help put your voice out there and you don't have to show your picture just tell your story just tell your story and get it out there so this and i'm i'm getting really tired of i've watched so many videos of and youtube has covered cases and it's it's like a groundhog down it, it happens over and over and over again it's continuous right now while i'm sitting here talking about this there'll be other girls being assaulted 
ever young children being locked up in cages. You don't know. It's disgusting and children need to know that they can speak out. They need to know they will be listened to. So anyway, we're going to go and listen to this. It's only about three minutes long altogether. So we'll listen. Targeted by McDougal as a child is bravely coming forward to share her story tonight. She is one of several people who police say experienced violence from McDougal. ABC 13 anchor Elisa Rivas is live to walk us through the timeline here, Elisa. Charlie, Eric, there are so many layers to this story, starting with the case prosecutors are building now. And it's hard to fathom. Don Stephen McDougal was a family friend, a person even trusted to live in a camper behind the home Audrey shared with others of family. Despite his disturbing history, documents go to what Audrey included the detail of the rock. The rope he allegedly used was also said to be found in his SUV. The Google's criminal has spent more than two decades. Just last summer, police that he stabbed a man he didn't know who was helping him jump car battery. And tonight we were hearing also from one of McDougal's old co-workers who says McDougal attacked him when he threw him out of his home 14 years ago. I opened the door up and told him he needed to leave and he come at me with the knife and I had my shotgun and I had hit him in the face with it and shut the door on him. I had no idea he was that kind of person. McDougal was reportedly such a four years in prison for that incident. Attacks against adults all pleaded guilty to enticing a child in Brazoria County back in 2007. The young victim told police he crawled into bed with her and tried to remove her pants. He did not have to register as under as part of the plea. The victim is in her 20s now, and Audrey's murder is hitting her hard. ABC 13's Luke Jones is the only reporter to talk with her about this and his life now with her story, Luke. And you know, Elisa, she says what happened to Audrey could have easily happened to her. I mean, total shock when she saw Don McDougall's face pop up in online posts. And tonight she says she wants to be Audrey's voice and a voice for other children in similar situations. I'll never forget his face after that. Carissa Davis would like nothing more than to forget Don McDougall's face. I know he's a nasty man. And what he did to her one night in 2007 when she was 10 years old. She was at her uncle's Missouri County house for a family gathering. McDougal's sisters were family friends. And he came into the room that me and my cousin were sleeping in. It says McDougal yanked her cousin from their bed, then got into bed with her. I tried to take down my pants and I immediately jumped up at that moment. I was like, do you know how old I am? Davis raced for the door with McDougal in tow. He grabbed me, and when he did, I just swung my arm and I hit him. But now that it's Audrey Cunningham's murder, she can't help but wonder what would have happened had she not been able to fight back. And everybody was still asleep. I mean, my uncle back up his woods. I mean, it could have been me. McDougal pleaded guilty to enticing a child and was just two years in prison, but got credit for almost one and a half years served. Notably, he wasn't required to register as a sex offender and went on to face numerous other charges. I think Brazoria County definitely uh, failed me and failed Audrey and possibly more. Right now. Hang on. I'm going to stop sharing this, sorry. Well, there's a tragic end to the case of um, a missing girl in tech who recovered the 11 year old at Cunningham who vanished on Thursday while on her way to school. I'm going to get Finally, right now she was one of these first. Now that was what 
She's in her 20s now, that's 2007, so 17, well, maybe 20, 18, 20. Oh. She, she'd be 20, 26, 27 now. How many? Uh, you cannot tell me. You cannot sit there and tell me. That young girl and old Audrey were the only girls he's ever tried to ever. Well, I'll show, I'll put this one has ever assaulted. Well, right? assaulted. You can't tell me that. Not in twenty odd years. No way. Right. I can pull up his prison record, don't you? Hold on. Well, um, let's see. Look at this. Hold on. I'm trying to find it for you. Here it is. Right. I'm going to share it with you because this makes me sick. This makes me sick. Going back to 2001. Just look at that arrest. Possession of marijuana. Okay. That's a minor. Assault of a public servant. Whatever that means. Possession of a dangerous drug. 2003 again. Assault of a public servant. 2003 again. Possession of marijuana. Right? 2005, evading arrest or detention. 2006, theft of more than $1,500, but less than $20,000. 2006, again, possession of meth. Now, this is where the hard, the hard drug is coming into it, right? He's now gone past marijuana, and he's going into the meth. 2007, enticing a child. That would be the case of that young girl you've just heard. That young lady, enticing a child. Go it down to enticing a child. That should never have been pleaded down. That should never. He got in her bed. He tried to take her underwear off. That is an enticing. That is an assault on a child. As she said, if she could run out of the house, there's forest at the back. He could have followed her. That could be her now. That should never have been cleared down in 2007. Never. Right? Let me go on. 2009, unauthorised use of a vehicle. Okay. 2010, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Two thousand fourteen, theft of property less than five hundred dollars. Two thousand fourteen again, reckless driving. Two thousand nineteen, assault causing bodily injury. Hang on. Yeah, I don't know what that one is. I'll show you the video for that, that aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Apparently he did prison time for that, not long done. Right? 2019, assault causing bodily injury. 2020, harassment. 2020, unauthorised use of a vehicle. 2023, 
resisting arrest, search or transportation. What is a guy? Now you're telling me this is in a small town, right? The people where rumour goes about you hear something and get spread. Right? You're telling me people didn't know about this guy. You're telling me the father who was buddy buddies with this guy did not know about this guy. People talk in small towns. They talk. They see him. They know what he's done. They know what he's like. The police see him. They know what he's like. Right? And however, in August 2023, it's got to be now. There's an assault on a guy where um, I think it was where they pulled up. He pulled up to help him uh, fix the car or something like that. And he, as he couldn't be on the guy, he whacked him with a, a bar or something and assaulted this guy. Right? However, when they went to the police station, the next day or the same day, whenever, they picked out the wrong guy. So that that was dropped. Now, just went away. Right? Until literally I think she went missing on a Tuesday. Wednesday, I think it was a Friday they arrested him. Until then. Until the day they spoke to him by his car, which he'd been trying to sell two days before Audrey went missing. Why? What was the big wish about trying to sell his car? Right? And that's when they arrested him on the charges of the incident that happened in August last year. If it if it had been done properly. If they give had a line up, whatever, uh, whatever they had to do, and that he'd been picked out properly, he'd be in jail. Audrey would be alive. The police department, Polk, Polk County Police, dropped the flipping ball on that guy. And one channel has actually got a recording of um, one of the police officers from Polk County stating they dropped the ball on this guy. Admitting they dropped the ball. And because of that, Audrey is dead. They've just literally turned their heads away from this guy time and time and time again. But that, this case here, right, over everything, that one in 2007, I believe any case which involves a child, there should be no pleading down. You should not be able to plead it down. And the plea did it down to enticing a child, which means he didn't have to register on the child defenders list. He didn't have to register. Right? And not only that, that he didn't just plead down, he didn't even admit his guilt on it. He got out of saying he was guilty by saying any other word they used. I can't remember what it was. But it should never have been pleaded down. Perhaps if he'd have been in prison then, none of this 
Cũng chỉ phát thường Đó Where's the other one? That one 2010 Perhaps if he got a longer sentence Because he got four years for that Or something like that he got out in six months put it that way he did six to twelve months in prison for that that's disgusting Texas your justice system stinks at this moment you're for every I've heard people say I've watched a lot of videos this morning and yesterday and I've heard a lot of people say that they, in Texas they were plead they plead cases down. No. No more pleading of cases down. And I also think I think so uh, as well as in the UK that your prior criminal History should come into account because it's done nothing on them all day. Nothing. He's got like six months, three or four years altogether out of all them charges. He's done about three to four years. That is disgusting. And now they're saying they're going for the DP on this case. Well, they better go for the death penalty on this case. This is one case I am all for. I stand with the US citizen in Texas in this town. I want the death penalty on this case. Right? I'm not. I'm one of these piece of people that I don't know if I could do the death penalty. Sentence someone to the death penalty. But I'm here. I could. And as some as I would say, if they did the hangman's if they was that the hangman, I'd be that man in the mask hanging them. But I wouldn't be wearing the mask, I'd be out there in public. I'm the one putting you down. You know what I mean? I'm the one who's going to do the deed. Look in my eyes because it's the last face you'll see. I would willingly. I would get the needle and jab it in his arm myself if I could. I wouldn't hide behind the window and do it. It's ridiculous. And we're going to talk about some else about him. He's, he's got a lot of tattoos. Right? He's got a hell of a lot of tattoos. Now, I heard someone say years ago, when people have tattoos, it tells uh, their life story. It tells you their, their, about that person. Right? And it's true, they do. Right? And my son, he's got a big tattoo on his arm. Well, he's got several tattoos. Right? But the one that stands out the most to me is the tattoo on his arm. It's the, it's the Aston Villa Football Club logo sort of thing. From Birmingham. If you're from Birmingham, UK, you know who Aston Villa Football Club are. Anyway. And then he's got a tattoo on his neck and it's like a, uh, you know, the heartbeat of someone. It's a bit like that. And he's got the date and some of his son. So you know he's a father because he's got the, that on his neck. So even if you knew nothing about my son, by seeing those tattoos, you know two things. He's a father, and he supports Aston Villa, Aston Villa Football Club. So tattoos do tell a story of that person. Well, I've also heard 
Hold on. Let's go back to the. He says he's in the he's in a brother. Oh, he says he's in a brotherhood. Well, I'm sorry to say, if he goes in general pop. That brotherhood will sort him out. They will literally cut those tattoos off him. You know what I mean? Because it makes their, whoever they are, look bad. Well, I don't know what these brother, brotherhood is. I really don't. But whoever it is, they won't stand for it. He's got the swastika on his arm. That isn't going to go down well in a prison. But even so, I still think he should be on death row. He should not go to general population because I think he could survive that. And then he gets to use the internet thing talk to people on the internet you know it makes me sick how we're paying for people to oh you are paying for people to sit in jail so they can go on internet you have to pay for all this yourself they get it for literally nothing it makes me my blood boil right now, yesterday I I've heard that Nancy Grace did another video. Um, we're going to listen to this video because I think you need to listen to it to know the full facts of this case. But before we do, I just want to find something. It's I'm gonna share this. Right? It's the Justice for Audrey Cunningham discussion group. Right? Oh God, I'm not seeing no more. Some group thing. I think I clicked on the wrong one from earlier. Right, let's have a look. It says here, someone posted, Ellen Mack, it appears Stephen McDougall was a roommate of Joss who watched Audrey while her father was working. Cassie, mum, the mum, lost a custody battle over Audrey and allegedly Stephen reached out to Cassie the day before she went missing under the guise he was willing to coordinate some kind of secret meetup at the park for Audrey and her mum without the father's knowledge. I've seen them messages and now I'm here but I'm not going to go for the messages. Because I think everyone's seen their messages. Stephen held himself out as Audrey's favourite person. I think he's been grooming Audrey. He's been living with her at that house, in the caravan, whatever you call it. Right? For a year. Around Audrey. He's been taking her to the bus stop most days, or even if she'd missed the bus, it'd be taking her to school. Right? And as someone pointed out, I'd like to know how many times she turned to school late when he took her. Or misheveled. You know what I mean? See, Steve, all right? Stephen held himself out as Audrey's favourite person in his communication with Mark and suggested he was on Cassie's side. Stephen seemed to have planned this meetup for after school on the day she went missing. Right? And she put, was Stephen trying to set up mum? Yes, I do. I think it was. 
Alright, here's some messages. I'm going to show them. Right? It says, I think this was from Stephen. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I wasn't meaning disrespectful, but sometimes that like, you would won't and can't talk about it on here. It's not something you can call me call me about. I did call. I just think you were now this is the mother in blue. I just think the way you came about that was extremely inappropriate and was disrespectful to not only to not only Justin but me as well. Now they they're talking about the messages when he was texting her about he would give him give her his truck and the deeds to his truck for one hour to rock her world. Knowing she was in a relationship already. Right? Audio call again. No. Video chat. Right? What's up? I'm super fucking. Oh no. I'm trying to. Super feck, effing livy. I'm home because I don't understand, right? I don't understand it, don't worry. <laughs> right? Yeah. What's up? I'm super effing livy. Um, honestly, I'm going to see if I can zoom in. Yeah. What's up? I'm super effing livy. I'm on. And honestly, because I don't understand. Why are you living? I've never disrespected you. Your baby has been asking me about you. Mother, this all just come across weird and wrong. I'm Val and Valentine's Day is not my favourite day. I lost my very, my, my very first best friend on this day. And that doesn't sound right and look bad. So he'd been messenger, messaging her on Valentine's Day or the, the night before Valentine's Day, I don't know. And what do you mean asking you about me? What has she been asking? Sweetie, hmm. I am as straightforward as it comes. If I was just talking to you to try to F, I would have done tried. It's very hard to read some of these you know what i mean then there's these messages it goes on the messages just go on what has she been asking right we've done that bit two sheet i'll give you that two shit i'll give you that she asked me if i ever talked to you and if we were as bad as they say you, and if you were as bad as they say you are because apparently the mother the grandmother and father made the mother out to be a joke, uh, a user. She wasn't. She wasn't a user. Just came off wrong, upset me. Wow. As bad as I say, what did you say? Oh, yeah, they have made it look like you're just horrible. I told her that you're doing a good, doing good, and I found to hang out with. When did she ask this? She asked, she asked me yesterday going to school. So we took her to school the day before. Right? I'm surprised she thought about me. She's scared to see me because of the reaction, of their reaction. Because apparently there's one time, and it's in these messages, that she did see a daughter. She was visiting someone and her daughter turned up. And uh, the daughter was like grounded for four weeks. Yeah, it says here, yes, she's still not allowed to go outside by herself in the evening. She was grounded for four weeks because she's seen her at Justin's mum. He goes, she's confused about the situation, but I told her that you are not hiding in the woods, but we talk. Oh, right, that's it. Sorry, I'm missing the chat here. It says, they, t 
the, the parent, her father and her grandparent mother tell her that her mother is hiding in the woods. So I should imagine she kidnapped her. Right? She's confused about the situation, but I told her that you are not hiding in the woods, but we talk. Now, I'm surprised of this because apparently Justin, the father, if he finds out anyone was in communication with Cassie from his side of the family, friend or family was in communication with Cassie, he cut them out of their lives completely. Right? But it goes on and on, these messages do. As you can see, 11 plus messages. I'd be here all day reading them messages. It's, it's disgusting. And I think, to be honest with you, because he was planning to take the daughter to meet her mum after school, right? Now, if she had gone along with that plan and gone to this certain area, right, to meet up with them, then it would have showed up on her phone. It would have shown up on her phone that she'd agreed to meet them at this place and all that. And he was setting her up. He was setting her up. But she didn't fall for it. She didn't fall for it. Right? So, that's that. I just thought you should see that. Just to give you a highlight of what the bloke is like. Now, I followed this guy from day this case from day one and I'll follow it to the end. Right? So he'd been living there for a year. The father left him to look in charge of her while he was at work. She, you cannot, no one in on this earth can tell me his the father, his buddy buddy, did not know that his buddy buddy was had all these charges up against him. Cannot tell me that. And I would advise any parent now, father, mother, grandparent, if you've got a daughter, a granddaughter, a grandson, a grand or son, and you pet the parents are separated and there's people going to the parents' home or going to the father's home, get those people checked out. Simple. Go to the police and ask them to do a, a check. You've got concerns, you want checks to run them. The police can do that. Right, and if they don't, then they are failing in their responsibilities as well. But you, as a, a parent or mother or grandparent, you can also do checks on people. You can do background checks. I think we get all this information by doing background checks. Right? So... But look at that. Hold on, I'm just trying to get back to there. Look at this. A simple background check would have brought up all this. Would have brought all that up to the police. Wouldn't have showed you, but I could have said, you need to be weary of this guy. Don't let your granddaughter, or don't let your daughter, or don't let your son, or whatever, around this guy. 
they can give you a simple little thing like that. They can't tell you what is done, but they can give you a little warning. So at least then you know, and you could go back to that and say it's your, your wife. The father can then go back and he can go through the solicitors if need be, the lawyers, whatever, DCFS, go through them and get the message to her that this person that she's got coming to her house has got, or this person he's got coming to this house has got this record and he should not be around children. But no one done a check. No one. They just thought, oh, he's just a family friend. He's okay. He's safe. I wouldn't let my two fur babies with that vile creature. I wouldn't. Let alone any of my grandkids. And if I thought someone like that was going around to my son's house or my daughter's house while their, their child was in the house, I'd literally rip them to pieces. I would go and give the checks myself on these people. And they know I would. You see, my children aren't like that. They don't mix with people like this. And luckily we're in the UK. But we have people like this in the UK. We have vile creatures like this in the UK, don't worry. The USA are, aren't the only ones. They're everywhere. Canada, Australia, you name it. Europe, they are everywhere. And look at them eyes, they're so menacing. They're completely menacing. But I truly believe he'd been grooming her. And I truly believe, in my opinion, he was assaulting her. Assay her. Before. Right? That's why she, he said, I'm her private person. I'm done. I've got the, no, I haven't got that. I've got the picture, but it's taking time to pull it up. I'm her favourite person, he said. I'm sure you was, mate. She's probably terrified of you, but too scared to say anything. Because you were buddy buddy with her daddy. Not me. So it's just disgusting. And it you got to prove the fact that the father knew he had this criminal history. You've got to prove the fact that he knew. And it's easy to say, how could you not know? He was a friend of yours. How could you not know he had this long list of uh, um, crimes? How could you not know? Easily. He didn't tell you. He didn't talk about it. In the father's eyes, he's a goody goody. He was putting up posts on a Facebook page for uh, children's clothing to be donated to the, this organisation. He's a goody goody. Yeah, right. And that's the, what he's making out to people. <coughs> now, there's another case. Where is it? I'll find it. Um, is this it? That's the story of it. I want to get right. Right. Yeah, this is the one, but I'm looking for the video of it. But is that, well, I won't find that video. I'll show you 
it coming up the video got right now I'll share this this was from that case in 2010 right in 2010 he was convicted of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon Alec Ryan the third was the victim in that case he worked together at a quick car in Crosby, changing oil. He seemed like an all right guy. He'd come over to hang out with me and my friends every now and again. Then things went south with us, he said. He said one night after some drinks at his house, McDougall tried to attack Brian with a knife. He got drunk one night. We threw him, he threw him out the house and he came back with a knife, slashed tires and tried to stab him with the knife. Had to run had to run him off with a gun. And the cops finally came out with dogs and got him, he said. He said the moments were very intense, terrifying it really was. He seemed like a nice guy, but he's got the whole of a side to him that no one seems to know about him until now. The official say McDougal is a family family friend of the Cunninghams who lived in a trailer on their property. The officials say they think he drove off with Audrey Thursday morning to take her to the bus stop, but she was never dropped off there. I'm wondering, where was the father that morning? Had he gone to work? Why? Had he gone to work or was he out working still? Because I'm wondering, was she killed before she left the house? Or was she killed during the car ride? Anyway, officials say, right, never dropped out there. Officials say that after arresting him, McDougal led them out to multiple locations near Livingston and Trinity River, where he gave them information. But officials did not specify why he led them to those locations and what he disclosed. Well, they knew the locations he went to because he had his phone and we all know the phones go ping, 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 ping. You know what I mean? Your phone will give you away every time. And I feel bad for this guy. I really do. Because he says, I wish I would have shot him, to be honest with you. That's my one regret. Didn't, didn't want to do it then because it would make you feel bad. But looking back, maybe I should have. If all the allegations against him is nothing I was got, apparently something is wrong with him in the head, he said. Now, at the moment, this is all very tame. Um, Let's see what this says. Let's just see. Good evening, everyone. I'm Anthony Antoine. This. Stop it. God, it's my bar, my what's the name bar at the top. It's just, if you stay too long, it moves. All right, I'm going to share the screen because this is a video of it, of it, I believe. Oh, God, where is he? I think it's the top 10. No, that's not it. That's not the one. It's still mercy. 
Sleeping in this child's heart and still loving this child's heart despite the horrendous right way he was treated. I, I think that that's a harder sentence than. I've got to blast it again. Yeah, I think this is it. Ah, too fast. I'm like, oh, I'll find it now. And I'll share it. I was having trouble finding it then because I've got so many. Windows open. Right, this is the one. Let's listen. Anthony, this. This is a conviction back from 2010 of McDougal's, and this is one of many on his rap sheet. This story shows just how dangerous and violent he can really be. Don Stephen McDougal, the last person little Audrey Cunningham was with before she vanished, according to officials. They say the family friend lived on the Cunningham's property. He's been under our microscope, and we found a lengthy, violent criminal history. Just the sheer look of him. I know I hate to judge a book by its cover, but you know, that's one book somebody should have judged. Ellie Bryan the third says he worked with McDougal back in 2010. One night after some drinks at his house, things got ugly. He got drunk one night, we threw him out of the house, and he come back with a knife and slashed tires and tried to stab me with a knife, and I had to run him off with a gun. The cops finally come out with dogs and got him. What were those moments like for you, almost getting stabbed? Terrifying. You know, it really was. I mean, he's, like I said, he seemed like a nice guy, but then he's got this whole other side to him that no one seemed to know about until now. McDougal was convicted of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for that attack. And two years earlier, he had been convicted of enticement of a child, according to records. Then in 2019, he was convicted of another aggravated assault. Court records saying he hit someone in the back of the head with a pipe. Officials arrested McDougal for another case on Friday, shortly after questioning him, as you see in this video. We remain hopeful that he will begin helping in this case. As the search for little Audrey continues. One of the most horrible, worst things somebody can do is lose a child. Because I lost my daughter when she was seven to cancer. So yeah, I know how it is. And this right here is even worse because there's no closure. And if you could say anything to McDougal now, what would you say to him? Tell him what happened. Where is she? They need to know. Family needs to know. Now, McDougal has not been charged with any crimes in the disappearance of... That was reported before her body was found. Um, but that was an incident that happened in 2010. So there's one in 2007, one in 2010. And then there's that one where we attacked a guy with a bar. I was telling you, telling you that. And that's the one I believe that got him up on charges. They arrested him for in the first place, is that one. But perhaps if they'd arrested him and got the details right in the first place, they'd have had him arrested and sitting in a flipping jail. You know what I mean? It's Little Audrey and Crime Stoppers. So that is just... Well, one of the police officers from Polk County has said they dropped the ball. They dropped the ball on this case. Now, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Why? Right. And uh, we're going to watch. I'll fast forward at certain points and whatever. But this is by Nancy Grace. And if you're not a member of hers, go go and subscribe. Costing nothing. But she is so down to earth. She doesn't mean the word. She says it as she sees it. And she says it with feeling as well. 
see you tomorrow dad and see it's, it's all about put that one so don't strike me nancy for showing me this showing this please don't strike me anyway so we're going to watch who knew who oh. cared for and loved on um, um, why the not that my time to again to process oh, the evidence God, that have been gathered me. to ensure that the justice for Audrey. You know what I hate is because every time I have to come out of YouTube. If I silence it at the top, I have to come out of YouTube. And then go into it again. For some reason, it just will not let me get the sound up. Will not let me Oh, wow. No. Wow. Just help if my cat isn't in my way. Right. Let's have a look. Find it again. This one. All right, we'll watch this one. And uh, I don't know why, but every time if I go to my taskbar and I put a silent on it up there, for some reason I can't get the volume back. Go right back to the building. This was a day ago. So this is one of the in the last hours, the body of a beautiful little girl, Audrey, just eleven years old, has been pulled out from under a bridge in a Texas river. Heads are gonna roll. I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. First of all, take a listen to this. At this time, I sadly announced that Audrey's body was located at the Trinity River on the U.S. Highway 59. As a result of today's developments, I will discontinue the Amber Alert for Audrey. And I, I want to thank DPS, Department of Public Safety, for all their help in this alert. The information that ha we have gathered in this criminal investigation is substantial. My heart aches with this news, and I express with my deepest sympathies and condolences to everyone who knew, who cared for, and loved Audrey. The Sheriff's Office, we will continue to process the evidence that has been gathered to ensure that the justice for Audrey. And you can hear the Polk County Sheriff Byron Lyons voice cracking after he and his whole team volunteers okay, so he you name it tried to find Audrey alive. That did not happen. Take a listen to what else Sheriff Byron Lyons has to say. Thank you to Trinity River Authority for lowering the water levels so that the divers could reach the area, could reach areas of, of interest. Due to the lowering, we were able to contact TRA, Trinity River Authority. They slowed down the, the outflow from the, uh, the reservoir and it allowed the water to go down and, and her body was discovered uh, there in the water. Um, but I'm not gonna say whether it was Harris County or Montgomery County or EquiSearch, it was a conglomeration of a lot of love and law enforcement networking together that helped discover her. I've done a lot of dive searches, but never have I seen the water actually lowered in a body of water in order to find. Again, okay, I will warning. Um, warning. Please take a break if you need to. We've been here now. I'm going to be a lot longer going over this, okay? 
So please, if you need to take a break, I understand, take a break. But this needs to be out there. Find a body. For those of you just joining us, the body of an 11-year-old girl, Audrey Cunningham, has been found. Joining me in all star panel to make sense of what we know now, including a man that predicted the defendant would attack again after the defendant attacked him. Did he go to jail? Hell no. That's why he was out to murder Audrey. Yeah, that victim joining us. But first, to, to Bob Price joining us, uh, editor, senior news contributor. You can find him at Britbart.com. Bob, thank you for being with us. Tell me about the discovery of this child. Don't miss your words now. Tell it as you see it. Because I love you, girl. Well, Nancy, thank you for having me on to discuss this horrific situation. So uh, Sheriff Lyons announced yesterday that they had recovered the body of, of this 11-year-old innocent little girl. Uh, just an absolutely tragic event. Uh, yesterday on your show, you just discussed that uh, the sheriff had taken uh, Mr. McDougall around various places he had been that day. One of the places that he took the sheriff's department to was that bridge where they found Audrey's body near one of the bridge pillars underneath the, the bridge. Stop right there, the Bob Price. Number one, you think I believe one thing that POC says, technical legal term, piece of crap. One thing he says, he's going to twist this every way he can to his benefit. Hey, Bob Price, when he was driving the police around, did he say, oh yeah, that's where I put her body? So what the sheriff explained is that he just w took them to places that he said he'd been that day, uh, kind of accounting for your time, so to speak. And one Bob, of the places was Bob, over by where they found the backpack. Yes, ma'am. Bob, is it true this guy backed into a tree and left an identifying mark from his bumper on the tree? when he was disposing of an 11-year-old girl's body. I think that's yes, how been... they figured it out. They find the backpack, they see that mark on a tree, and they know. Well, this is the, the place where the body was found is about five miles down the river from where the backpack was found. But yes, he, he reportedly did strike a tree with his Suburban, uh, and they were able to match both what I've been told, uh, tire tracks and his bumper marks to that location where the backpack was found. Um, and then the body was found lower down the river and, and the current's moving very swiftly there. This is just below the Lake Livingston Dam uh, and the water is high in the da in the lake right now. And so they've been releasing a lot of water. The current's been flowing rapidly and that's why they were able to lower the level of the lake, as you mentioned, uh, of the river in, in order to uh, slow the currents down enough that the divers could get in to where they suspected her body would be. And sure enough, they found us there. I asked Sheriff Lyons yesterday if there was any evidence that the body had been weighted down or in any other way uh, rigged to where it would stay underwater. And he, he declined to answer that comment. He did not say no, which I would think he would, would say no if that wasn't the case, but he declined to answer that. Can I ask you something, Bob Price? What is so unique about his bumper? That, that Does he have a hitch on it? That they could identify I, the mark on the tree and match it to his bumper? I'm not sure exactly how they matched that. It could be that there was maybe evidence of the tree on the bumper, something like that. I'm looking at it right now. There's got to be something unique about that bumper. Maybe there's some paint on the tree that will match up. I mean, you know, you can forensically identify a type of paint from a car and trace it to the year, the model, the make, the works, and then go back to his vehicle and find, if you take the time, forensic evidence of tree residue on the bumper. 
That said, joining me now, in addition to Bob Price, associate editor, senior news contributor, Britt Bart, longtime friend and colleague, the gold standard. Mark Class is joining me. Mark Class, founder of Class Kids Foundation at classkids.org, has devoted his life to finding missing children after his beautiful daughter Polly was kidnapped and murdered. May that perp rot in hell. Mark Class, I just so many thoughts colliding in my head right now. Because when Bob Price, our investigative reporter, joined it is speaking and he's talking about the currents and the cold water and her body under a bridge like about like Going along with the current, dead, probably face down in that cold, cold water till it lodged under a bridge. An 11 year old girl, Mark Class, let it rip. Well, listen, Nancy, before he lowered her body or tossed her body into the river, uh, he exposed, exposed this child to the worst possible nightmare that anyone could even envision. I mean, she had, she was, she was taken to this place. She was murdered by this guy. She was most likely sexually assaulted by this guy. And he went on with his day after this. This is a guy that has a, a, a criminal history. Um, somebody that is known to have caused harm yet he was given access to this child. I, I, I don't understand this dynamic at all. I, I don't understand what the priorities were with this little girl's family that this guy could even have access to then commit the horrendous and dastardly deeds that he did. I it's absolutely up. obscene. Hey, who is this speaking? It is obscene. That was Bob, sorry. Hey, Bob, Bob Price, I was just about to go to you. Uh, Bob Price, investigative reporter, joining us from Breitbart. Bob, something, and I want to go back to Mark Price on this. Remember, everybody else on the panel i've told you we're not having it at windsor castle jump in when you feel like it but bob price yes no isn't it true that the defendant in this case don stephen mcdougall age 44 42 was spotted at a gas station around 9 a.m and at that time he did not have audrey with him is that correct yes video evidence is is uh, proven that up to be true according to what we've heard it's you know it's just absolutely obscene that this man was within a thousand yards of this little girl at any time. This father, it's it's very evident. The man is covered with neo-Nazi tattoos, Aryan Brotherhood tattoos, SS. A Nazi uh, swastika for Pete's sake. Yes, all of these kinds of and things. In and in pictures, he's doing the one, two, A, B, Aryan Brotherhood. I mean, it's like a does a piano fall on your head to know oh, he this. Had, Guy from him, and I'm following up, Bob Price. Uh, thank you for confirming that. Mark Class, you said this, and look, chills, arms and legs. He just went on about his day like nothing had happened. There he is, filling up with gas after he's been driving around and around and around with this girl's body probably in the car to find a place to dump her body. And look, he's a sex offender. He's already pled guilty to trying to have sex, taking the underwear and the PJs off a little girl, getting in bed with her. How do you get access to another little girl? Me. Well, he showed up at a dump shop, a courthouse, which is a mile from the jail the, the next morning. Talk about nonchalant. Yes. Mark Class, what you said just before Lana jumped in, uh, guys, uh, Lana Shadwick, high-profile lawyer out of Texas who has made her way out of the courtroom to join us, former Harris County judge and prosecutor at LanaShadwick.com, also added, and she's right, Mark Class, the guy didn't just go for gas. He was propped up at a donut shop. This is after he has disposed of an 11-year-old girl's body in that cold water, Mark Class. Well, this man has absolutely no value for any life other than 
his own or he wouldn't have been able to do that. His conscience would have stopped him. He has no conscience. He's just a killing machine who for some inexplicable reason was out and about with an 11 year old girl. I don't know what anybody was actually expecting the result of this union to be, but my God, <laughs> I my mean, my God, if you could only turn back time, and talk about detached. He goes to a donut shop, which is right across from the courthouse. You can throw a ball and hit the judge's window. I mean, it's down the street from the jail. What kind of narcissist or detached individual is this? You're going to go downtown where the cops are? Okay, I just and violated every rule to be a good trial lawyer. I placed myself in this by thinking of my own children, Mark Class. I, I, I really don't know how you even move forward. All I can think about is my girl. I mean, a convicted sex offender who was allowed to plead down his case where he attacked another little girl in her bed. He had access to her home too. Let's think about these similarities. It's like a fingerprint. Now, in addition to attacking Alec Bryan, who was with us, Alec Bryan the third, I believe with a knife. Now this, why was he allowed to be around 11 year old Audrey? And without having a donut, Mark Class, a donut. He's pumping his gas after driving. Don't you know he went in all these circuitous routes trying to figure out where to hide this girl's body? This little 11 year old girl with that big smile. And now he's got to fill up his gas tank and get a donut. Really? That's to you, Class. Well, I don't know what even to say about something like this, Nancy. I mean, one has to look back at this guy's criminal history and to see how he's been and his medical history and to see how he's been diagnosed. I spent my life trying to keep people like this away from little children. You put out the information, you educate people, you raise awareness, you get laws passed, but still there are families that are willing to allow something like this, allow a known monster to have access, unfettered access apparently, to their little children. I don't know what anybody expects the outcomes of these kinds of situations to be. It's, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's, 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 it's uncivilized. It's, it's nightmarish. It's, it's spawned from the devil himself. Have you looked at this guy's tattoos? I'm not trashing tattoos. Don't care. You want to ink up your body? Have at it. But when you put swastikas and Aryan Brotherhood tattoos all over your body, you're like a walking billboard. You might as well walk down Third Avenue and near the city of the sun that says, I am a piece of crap. Stay away from me. I mean, who puts a Nazi swastika on their arm in plain view and insist on wearing the sleeveless wife beater t shirts? He's proud of it. And his criminal and wreck, jump in. Yeah, oh. He's a walking billboard for the penitentiary system. If, if we, you know, to your point, and I think Mark is an absolute warrior for children of, of, around this country. He speaks with authenticity. And when we think about this guy being out on the streets, uh, it, it, it's just hor horrendous that he would have had access to this small child. Guess what I'm holding well, in Nancy, my hand right Nancy. now, guys? A rap sheet. It goes all the way to, back to 2001, possession of pot, uh, Cleveland. 2002, assault of a public servant, don't know what that was, 2003, drugs, 2003, assault, 2003, more marijuana, 2005, evading arrest, 2006, theft, uh, keeps on going, and meth. Now he's on to meth, and they say pot's not a gateway drug. Okay, whatever, uh, 2007, enticing child. There you go. There you go. That should have been a child molestation charge felony. 
unauthorized well, use Nancy, of a vehicle. Wait, I, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I, more aggravated assault, unauthorized use of vehicle. That I guarantee you, that was pled down from a theft by a theft by receiving stolen property being a car. 2014 theft of property, reckless driving, uh, assault for bodily injury, harassment. 2023 resisting arrest. You know, hold on just a moment. Why am I reading the rap sheet? I have a victim with me right now, Alec Brinder, who was sold by this Don Stephen McDougall in 2010. Alec Brian the third. What happened? Well. Um, he started working at the place I was at, and which was where? friends brought him over to what were you, what were you uh, quick working? car. Now, we've, I've already read through what happened, but this is the guy, and we've seen a video of clips of what he said, but you got to listen to him, because later on, you know, it's just a shame what he's got, what, how he feels. I was, we worked in an oil change place okay. in Crosby, Texas, Yep. and uh, some friends brought him over to my house and uh he got a little belligerent when he was drunk and uh, started making comments and actions towards one of their wives and whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait 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 Alec Bryan the third what kind of comment did he make to a woman oh he was basically he was grabbing her and hitting on her like uh, he was trying to you know do inappropriate things with her have sex with her. Pretty much, yes, ma'am. Did he touch any of her private parts, grab her rear end, touch her breast? What was he saying? Um, he was just talking. I don't know if he t where he touched her because uh, we I wasn't that part of it, but she had come out and said that he was groping her and that he was uh, saying lewd things about her and how he wanted to have sex with her. And, I'm uh, sure he know, didn't just, say, I want to have sex with you. I'm Sloan's lines. I'm going to add a few. I gave up cursing, so sorry about that. Uh, Ellen Bryan III, and this is in a public place with a group of women and men around? Yeah, this was at uh, my house. So, Ellen, if he would do that in front of grown men and women, grope a woman, what would he do? with an 11 year old little girl all alone in his SUV or all they alone in her and they home. And can't defend herself. She couldn't defend herself. And in her mind, this is daddy's friend. You know how hard it is to get child molestation victims to speak out. They don't even understand what's happened to them. And this is daddy's friend. What's she gonna do? She probably thinks, well, daddy they went on knows vacation together. What? They went on vacations together. Okay, what? The father did? How do you know this? Please tell me what you know, Alec Bryan III. There is a Facebook page called Justice for Audrey Cunningham, and there are pictures on there of them in a vehicle, uh, Don and Audrey and uh, uh, the group of family members going on vacation in the Florida. You so know, the woman's out and says, this guy is groping me. Then what happens? Um, well, her husband tries to fight him, and I stop him, and we just throw him out of the house. You yeah. darn right. The <laughs> husband better try to fight him. If David Lynch didn't punch the daylights out of him, if it were me, we'd be looking at a divorce lawyer right now. So the husband goes in. He tries to take a swing at McDougal. You break it up, and then what happens? We basically just, uh, I just forced him out of the house, told him he's got to go. Okay. And, you know, he's being belligerent with me at this time. And uh, I push him out the door, and then a little time goes by, and I hear somebody beating on the door. It's him. He has a knife, and he's stabbing at my door, trying to get back in the house. Then what happened? I grab my shotgun, and I open up the front door, and he comes at me with the knife, and I hit him in the face with the gun, with the barrel of the gun, and get him back out the door, and we call the cops. He came at you and, with a knife? Uh, yes, ma'am. Then what happened? Uh, I, like I said, I hit him in the face with the barrel of the gun and pushed him out. 
and uh, slammed the door and called the cops once again. Well, so far, you're the only one that has gotten justice with this guy, Don Stephen McDougal. And it seems like even the butt, the barrel end of a gun didn't teach him a lesson because here he is with this 11-year-old girl. Dr. Kendall Crowns, um, help me out, guys, with me, renowned Chief Medical Examiner, Tarrant County, lecturer, Texas Christian University Medical School, has performed literally thousands of autopsies. Dr. Crowns, thank you for being with us. Please give me some good news, if there is any good news right now. Forensically, did the cold water help us in any way to determine COD cause of death? So the cold water will slow down the decompositional process, so it will preserve injuries better. Instead of the injuries being obscured by the body decomposing, it will be uh, kept intact. So in that manner, it'll it'll aid uh, the investigators uh, with the uh, case because there will be less decomposition. Dr. Kendall Crowns, you perform so many autopsies. When you see a child like Audrey laying there on your autopsy table, I don't know, are you like me? Sometimes I don't know whether to cry or be angry or just throw up, just vomit. How do you do well, it? There's always an emotional component with children, so you have to always say to yourself, you're here to get the answers, you're here to catch those people that uh, have caused this death or for that matter to exonerate people that have been blamed for it but you're there to get answers and you can't let your emotions cloud your judgment or make you biased Alec Bryan III who was assaulted by this same guy Don Steve McDougall now person of interest suspect in the brutal murder and I guarantee you the rate of an 11 year old little girl defenseless my guess is alone in the car with this guy who is living in a camper in daddy's backyard you are quoted saying that he came back to your house and started stabbing stabbing the door and the tires of the cars he pulled the knife on you and came at you most important you're not surprised to hear he's involved in Audrey's disappearance. Why do you say that? Um, not at all, because uh, it was just a couple of years ago I saw it on Facebook where somebody was looking for information on him because he was sending lewd pictures to their little girl. Dear Lord in heaven, slow it down, EB the third. What did you just say? Uh, somebody had posted on Facebook about the him a picture of him and his name saying that he was sending lewd pictures to their daughters to their daughters yes ma'am mark class does it never end with this guy well i think that that's an important point i mean this guy is a habitual criminal this guy has been doing dastardly horrible things his entire life and exactly where does the prosecutor get off thinking that being light on this guy is somehow going to change it and make it better for the next individual that has to face him. Obviously, this guy has done how many years? Over 20 years of criminal activity, nonstop criminal activity, assault, going after little girls, doing all of these horrible things. Yet here he is on the street in a car with a little girl. And who is he? He's daddy's friend. You know what, Nancy? He's daddy's friend until he isn't daddy's friend. He's daddy's friend until he takes her out of the car and starts doing whatever the hell it is that he did to her that made him believe he had to throw her dead body into a river. It's just pure evil. Why is this guy even existing? Why is this guy even on the face of the earth? Certainly, why is this guy in society? I'm about to go to our shrink. Karen L. Stark joining us out of New York, renowned TV, radio trauma expert and consultant. But Lana,
Shadwick set it up for me. Here is a guy with this long record. You were a prosecutor. You're a judge. Now you're a high-profile lawyer in this jurisdiction, Livingston, Texas. You know what? Every time I would get a case, it could be a car theft. It could be a nickel bag. It could be a, any, any number of things. And if I saw the defendant had a gun, all I could think about was my fiance, Keith, getting murdered. And I would insist on jail time every time I could get it. Why in the H-E-double-L? When this guy crawled into a little girl's bed and wrestled off her pajamas and her underwear, why did he get a cheap plea and walk out free? Walk out free. I, I don't know what they do in Brazoria County, but that won't fly in Polk County, East Texas. Just telling you right now. And another so, thing, there he is. I have to find out from Alec Bryan the third that this guy is in sending lewd, which means his penis, that's what that means, pictures to her daughters on Facebook. He's not even trying to hide it for Pete's sake. That was never prosecuted. I'm just hearing about that the first time right now, Lana. Yep. Well, and not only. Only that there was a, a stabbing. In August. Um, that he was being held on since, I guess, Friday um, with regard to an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. That's a clue. In Texas, that's what we call a clue. So he's <laughs> That's got what a I call a history. similar transaction. With me is psychologist Karen Stark at karenstark.com. That's Karen with a C in case you need her. Karen, number one, who is this guy except... I hope, about to enter death row. But who, who are these people that kept letting him off over and over and over? Nancy, it's impossible to understand how he was able to get away with this. It just doesn't make any sense. He is a psychopath. There's no surprise at all that he was out there and committing these crimes and after young girls and he's a walking advertisement with those tattoos. He's telling you who he is. Okay, I know he's all telling... that. No offense, Karen Stark. I know all that. He's telling them by his tattoos, his story. It doesn't... Oh. Hold on, I've got to go back on to that tab, do it's telling them the story through the tattoos. I can see all that. Has, I'm asking you, what is he psychologically? Who is he and how has he managed to charm people to let him into their lives? Nancy, a textbook case of a psychopath. He has no conscience. He could be out there eating a whole meal after he killed her. And yes, you're right. There's no doubt in my mind that he sexually assaulted her that he probably raped this little 11 year old and he does not have a conscience, just like Mark said. So it doesn't mean a thing to him. He could be out there and then do it again and again and again. And it just is shocking. I don't have an answer for why he kept getting off and being allowed to be out there. And addition to which, why was he living on the property? There, were, there is a rumor going about and I think it's vile. 
I think it's a vile rumour going about, that she was pregnant. Now, whoever put that rumour out there is disgusting. This is an 11-year-old girl we're talking about. Right? She can't defend herself no more. We, the public, USA public people, have to defend her and stand up for her, speak out for her. Because whoever put, has, has ever said that is disgusting. And I'm sure if she was, it would have come out on the autopsy. And I'm sure they would have said that. We will get told the public that. Simple as. How can somebody not see with the way that he presented himself that he was a danger to this little girl and should never have been around her? Bob Price joining me, associate editor, senior news contributor, Breitbart. Uh, you can find him at Breitbart.com. Bob Price, again, thank you for being with us. I understand that Audrey's body was lodged on something underneath a bridge. Is that correct? Yes. Yesterday I was down there by the river and I noticed a large number of uh, uniformed uh, tactical police officers in the area. There were boats in the area. Probably 30 to 40 people right in that one area where the body was found. And, and that is unusual based on what the previous day's activity had been at those locations. So clearly sometime Sunday night, or excuse me, not Sunday night, these days are running together now. Uh, Tuesday night, Monday night, excuse me, the Equisearch people, we believe, uh, discovered using their sonar, discovered that her body was lodged down there. Um, the currents were too strong at that point in time to... Uh, to get her out and so the police were there to secure that area later on Tuesday they declared it to be a crime scene as of this morning we have an update that uh, district attorney Shelley Sitton has now filed the capital murder charges against Donald Stephen Don Stephen McDougal uh, and this is not the only child he was hanging around with in, in recent months uh, there was, there's another little girl who's a friend of Audrey's. Audrey went to her birthday party, and Stephen McDougal thinks that going to 11-year-old girls' birthday parties is a cool thing to do. And these parents who obviously know who this guy is think it's okay for this neo-Nazi uh, Aryan nation hate group wearing tattoo. I, I can't even describe all this stuff. You know, for, the, for them to bring this thug, this animal, to their children's birthday party you know i'm thinking back uh lana shadwick i want to hear your thoughts on this i remember when the twins were born they were very premature and we have a relative who's perfectly nice but he smokes i wouldn't even let him come in and visit the twins because he smoked and i didn't want you know nicotine can trigger can trigger sudden infant death syndrome and it hurt me to do it. Oh, I, I love him. But he can't come in. So how in the hell do you let a Nazi Aryan brother around your children? Well, there's there's two sticks to that. Not taking up for him or anything like that. There's a social media video post of an individual who's had altercations with McDougal. And she said he's charming. He works you, you wouldn't believe anything, and then boom. And she was in the car with him. He took the, a cell phone away from her. Um, so, but. Whoa, so whoa, 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 wait, that. wait, wait. Drink from the car, Audrey. First, Ellie Bryan III tells me about this guy coming at him with a knife. Nothing happened. He walked right out of jail. Then I find out he's trying to send, we believe, penis shots to little girls. Uh, now, the, what, what happened with the woman in the car? Why did he take away her cell phone? I do not know. She knew she was in trouble, but she I don't believe charges were filed. I don't believe she went to the authorities, but she's talking now. Why and would he putting... take away her cell phone? That's not good. So you can't use it. The call for help. Okay, uh... I'm just having a hard time taking all of this in. Um, 
I want to talk about also the brilliance of how they lowered the water in this entire body of water to reach the child. And joining me is, he's been very quiet, which is uncharacteristic, Chris McDonough, Director of Cold Case Foundation, former homicide detective. Uh, host of a YouTube channel, The Interviewer. I found him. Chris McDonough, I've done a lot of water searches and diving myself, but I've never seen a body, an entire body of water lowered, the water level lowered to get to the victim. Tell me how it's done, because you have. You know, that, that was a great investigative move. Uh, by law enforcement in this case by working with the Trinity River uh, Authority engineers. And basically, uh, as we're aware, there's a reservoir uh, above. And so what they do is they close the what they're called lock gates, uh, which controls the flow of water downstream because everybody knows water goes in one particular direction. And that in of itself then, you know, opened up an opportunity for the search uh, forensic diving teams uh, maybe they got dogs uh, on boats uh, where sometimes you can get the scent. Uh, and remember, of, everybody, the... dogs can smell your scent, your clothes, a dead body, you name it, even in water. Go ahead, Chris. Yes, ma'am. And so uh, whenever you have a body dump into water, there are a lot of uh, considerations from an investigative aspect have to take be taken place almost immediately. The the first one question I want to know is: Did she have? Was she alive when she went into the water? Oh, dear and Lord in heaven! Shit. Why did you make we'll, me think we'll about that? I haven't even considered yeah. that. Hey, uh, I'm to sorry, you, but... no, you're right. We have to think about it, and when you present it to a jury, you damn would not have tears in your eyes or even blink. To Dr. Kendall Crowns, let's follow up on what Chris McDonough just said. Uh, Crowns, Chief Medical Examiner, Tarrant County, District Station, Texas. Dr. Kendall Crowns, in a nutshell, no Latin phrases, no medical terms. How do you determine if this child was alive when she was put in the water? So usually when an individual drowns, there will be changes in the body that you can find, which include uh, fluid on the lungs, pulmonary edema. They will all a lot of water into their stomach. So you look for that. Uh, those two are the main criteria for looking for I don't for understand drowning. what you just said. You're saying, Dr. Kimmel Crown, to tell somebody drowned alive, they were put in the water alive, you'd find pulmonary edema around the heart. Uh, water around the heart would be... Um, in the pericardial sac, which is the sac surrounding the heart. So you wouldn't see any water in the heart. You'd see water in the lungs. So water be, or uh, fluid? You mean lake water? Lake water? Lake water okay, in the lungs just, causing just question, fluid in the lungs. Why did you say should have pulmonary edema? A, what is that? Two, when you could have so easily said should have lake water in the lungs. Well, because if you're alive and you're thrown into the water when you're alive, you'll be gasping and inhaling the water. So you would pull that into your lungs and into your stomach or into your airways and into your stomach. You would find that in uh, the autopsy. Plant. How do you examine the lungs to determine there's water? And how do you, uh, well, I mean, two and two still equals four. How do you determine that water was from the lake? Or do you really even have to? So you can do it with the autopsy. The lungs will be heavy and full of fluid. And then on histology or microscopic examination, you can look for debris from the lake water in the way. Yes, debris from the lake water. How do you get the in any uh, debris therein out of the lungs in order to analyze it? Well, you wouldn't get it out. You would actually take sections of the lung at autopsy that then would be processed and turned into microscopic sections to look at under the microscope and that debris would still be there because it would be entrapped in the airway. Bob Price joining me, investigative reporter, associate editor, senior news contributor, Breitbart. Bob, I know that there was a recreational lake. Is she found in the lake or is she found in 
the river that goes okay. into and out of the lake. So Lake Livingston is the second largest lake in Texas, and, and she was found below the dam in the Trinity River. Uh, the lake is, is a, a contributing waterway to the, the Trinity River, about five miles downstream from where the dam is and from where the backpack was found. So it, it's still unclear at this time if she entered the water or was placed in the water near the dam and floated downstream and became entangled in the bulkhead or in the pilings of the bridge, or if McDougal, because he said he went to that bridge that day, that area, did McDougal place her there and trap her in that area where her body would hopefully on his part never be found? Those are the questions that we still need to get from the district attorney's office as this investigation unfolds. Smart class joining me, founder of Class Kids Foundation, classkids.org. Mark, let me talk to you about the defendant. You've dealt with so many child killers. Do you think this guy intentionally put her in the river so her body would travel far from the disposal spot? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I do. I mean, I think he was trying to, to disappear her. I don't think there's any question about that. But I, I wonder, listening to this guy's history and listening to what this guy's been allowed to do, if this little girl ever had a chance. I mean, the minute this guy stepped on that property um, and was allowed to stay on the property, I, I think that this child was doomed. And I think that the supervising adults around her should have understood and realized that. And they didn't. They failed their child in the worst possible way. Uh, it's absolutely unbelievable. Who lets a neo-Nazi live on your property? A neo-Nazi lets a neo-Nazi live on their property, particularly somebody that's got the uniform, that proudly wears the swastikas, that proudly carries his criminal history, that looks forward to more mayhem and more mayhem. And it's always escalating, Nancy. These things always escalate. And at the end, and we've talked about this hundreds of times. At the end, there's a dead little girl or a dead little boy. And we all go, well, gee, how could this have happened? Well, sometimes it's inevitable. You know, Mark, you're right. Inevitable. I feel like Audrey never had a chance. I want to go back to Alana Shadwick joining us. Former judge, prosecutor, now lawyer in this jurisdiction, Livingston, Texas. What now, Lana? I mean, will anybody ever fess up? Yeah, I gave him a cheap deal. Yeah, I didn't prosecute. Yeah, we didn't indict him. I mean, there's one thing after the next, one offense after the next. This guy, for Pete's sake, is using meth. Meth, of all things. Well, the Polk County District Attorney filed capital murder charges on McDougal, and that was yesterday. Um, he has no bond right now, and she's charged him with capital murder because it involves a um, child 10 years to 15 years old. So th there's been something done about this. Now, um, now. But if he'd been prosecuted for sending penis pictures, we think, lewd photos to little girls, or if his case hadn't been pled down to nothing when he wrestled the underwear and PJs off another little girl, he would have been in jail and Audrey would be alive today. He would have been in daddy's camper in the backyard for Pete's sake. If he had been arrested in August for that aggravated assault yes. with a deadly weapon. And, and who gave the, the the father or the grandmother custody of the child, such that they're friends with McDougal. And this is who you're going to let pick up your daughter um, from the bus stop or take her to the bus stop or take her to school? You know, how do you reconcile yourself, Mark, Chris McDonough, to the fact that the only thing we can do now is get justice for this little girl. That's the only thing left to do. She's not going to go to high school. She's not going to go to senior prom. She's not going to play basketball or softball for the school. 
She's not going to be a cheerleader. She's not going to college. She's not going to marry and have children. It's over. And she died a horrible death. And her body is thrown in the cold, cold waters of a running river. And all we're left with are pictures on Facebook and a courtroom. we got to fill with the jury and get the death penalty. That's what we're going to do. Final thoughts, Mark Class? Well, yeah, Nancy, the death penalty hopefully ensures that this guy will never get out of prison again. That's why the death penalty needs to exist. There has to be a line drawn in the sand. Right. I'm going to close this one because there's another one of hers I'd like to watch. And I've only seen clips of it, so it's um, a bit more full on. But again, it's something we need to watch. Let's have a look. That one we've just seen, where's the one speak last night? Oh, God, I can't find it now. Let's see. Yes, I know to do. Come on. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Right. No, Bobby. Right. Oh, God, take this cat mouth. Come on, there you go. Um, this is the one. Now, I will say. And there's just something off. Now, I, did you see all his tattoos? Right. Sorry, Nancy, I left you in that position. But this, I will put up for this. This is a warning. This is a trigger warning in this one because they talk to T. We work with Ecusers, and my heart goes out to it because he had a daughter who died, right? And this is why he does this now, as I believe. And the Ecusers do it completely free of charge. No one is charged. They don't put no bills out. It's all done on donation so if anyone wants to make a donation make it to exercise i will put a link in the bio covered in hate tattoos who would take her to school alone in the car with him with a sex offense in the last hours we learned that this 11 year old little girl do any of you have little girls or little boys that are or were 11 years old? This little girl's body was weighted down with a rock tied by rope to her body. Who could do that to an 11 year old little girl? I mean, take a look at this. This guy would you leave your child alone with him much less put her in the car with him? Give him access to your home with your child asleep in the bed around him i mean think about it one of his last offenses on his rap sheet oh yeah he got a sweet plea deal didn't have to register as a sex offender and walked free over and over and over and over and over but this time he had access to a home and was caught in the bed with a minor child a girl and had taken off her underwear and pj bottoms 
now he has access to Audrey, and now Audrey is dead at the bottom of a river, weighted down by a rock. Oh, yeah. Texas, it's on you. You have the DP death penalty. Needle. You going to use it? Tell him, girl. Tell him. If anyone can fight for this little girl, it's you, Black Nancy. You're the one who can fight for that little girl. And you know how the system works, so you can fight for them. So do it. Don't let them get away with anything, Nancy. Or you can let him somehow slip out of this, too. Because all of his other crimes, most of them, were in Texas. Mm. And he walked. He yeah. skipped out of the courthouse. Free as a bird. He ran, hopscotched, out of the jail each time. And now Audrey is dead. I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. Wow, what we have learned overnight by taking a long, hard look at a formal affidavit used as an arrest warrant. Wait till they perform those searches. But right now, joining me, in addition to an all-star panel to make sense of the evidence as we know it right now, this lady is a hero. The lady that called police when she spotted this Nazi Aryan brother sex perv who I believe murdered an 11-year-old girl, Audrey. I believe he raped her. And I believe he weighted her body down with a rock and threw her body in the river. Joining me right now is Leslie Gascon, Gaskins. She is an Exxon employee. And she's the one that called 911 and landed his rear end behind bars. Of course, then he started lying and lying and lying. But despite his lies... Police managed to find Audrey's body. Leslie Gaskins, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Ms. Gaskins. I'm very excited. Yes, ma'am. Tell me what happened when you see the defendant covered in all his tattoos. I don't know if you could see his swastika uh, or not, but tell me what happened when he came into your Exxon. It was just a few dollars in change for gas. It could have been a couple of beers. I'm not real sure because I didn't know that he was significant. But he was so ugly. I keep saying that. He's just so ugly and so creepy looking that you just don't forget his face. And it just, I don't know, his face just stuck with me. And then the next day when I saw his mug and they said to call if you had seen him. I called right then. Didn't even hesitate. What, uh, when he came in to your Exxon, are you saying that it was either for gas or beer? Yeah, it was, yes. And I'm curious, yes, hold on, let me get my right pen. What time of the day did he come in? It was after nine o'clock. I believe. I'm not real sure. 9 a.m., you know, 9 p.m. I am. I am. I worked the day shift that day. Uh, question. Was this on February 15, the day Audrey went yes, missing? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I worked the day shift that day. What time do you go in? I go in at 5.15 in so the morning. you're there first thing in the morning. Now, February 15, I believe, was a Thursday, correct? Yes, ma'am. So you're there at 5 a.m., 5.15. You get everything opened up and ready. What were you doing? Were you behind the counter when he came in? Yes, yes, ma'am. There was a line of people, and he was just in the middle of the line. Did he smell of alcohol or anything else, pot, cigarettes? No. No, no, I didn't notice, and he wasn't dirty like they said uh, when he got went to the mechanic shop. Yeah, he wasn't dirty and all that either. 
So this is 9 a.m. I'm trying to place him, that time in the uh, line of events that we have so far. Do you recall what he was wearing? I don't. I don't. What I, about I, him stands out to you? His face, his his beard, his his eyes. He has like a crazy eye. Yeah, does one look one way and one look the other way? It kind of does, just now. I've tried to figure and that I out because in he, some pictures, they look like they're both looking at you. And in others, one looks like it's looking off. Yeah, yeah. And I think he kind of a, was kind of a regular here. I think I've seen him in here before. What's your recollection? Because I remember his eyes. Uh, he, he's just the eyes. Yeah, I, the first time I saw his eyes, they're very light blue, and they're mm -hmm. piercing, and there's just something off. Now, could you see all of his tattoos? No, ma'am, I don't think I could. I think I could. I think this woman who's talking, uh, she was at the, um, oh, God, I'm here. Right. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, God. Let's see if I can find it again, because I'm not finding it here. Um, she was, people say, she lied because when I was talking to her on the TV, she couldn't give out what he was wearing, uh, what he brought. I don't know, but yeah, this is it. Right, let's have, go down here. I'll share this with you. Oh God, I've got a bit of hunger. I'm going to share this with you because this is the page. And I'm sure it's on here. It was posted. So. I. Right, um, uh, uh, no, there we go. We can watch that in a minute. Oh, no, we've seen them messages. Uh, Oh, God. It's on here somewhere. I know I've seen it. Oh, that's the timeline of the August stabbing last year. Right? Well, we'll go over that as well. Maybe any other time we'll... We'll see. Yeah, that's his next room. Oh, that is somewhere. I know it is. I've seen it. Yeah. Right. If you listen to the Nancy Grace interview, you heard the lady from the Exxon station talking again on how she saw him that morning. He was not there according to the store owner. I talked personally with the owner of that store and he told me that he spent four hours reviewing the tapes and he was never there. He did it twice. Not that matters anymore. Okay, I do not know the lady who they interviewed and it wouldn't be fair for me to call her a liar. I just wanted to clarify her clarified what the store owner told me. Now, I'm sure the police would have gone through them tapes themselves. You know what I mean? 
There is a possibility that someone similar came into the store and the lady thought it might have been Mr. But again, the owner said he was not there according to the case. Right? One woman commented, I did think it was odd that she said she definitely remembers he was there, but couldn't remember exactly what he brought, what he wore, if he was dirty, what he said, nothing else. She just kept saying, I'm not sure it was odd. She mentioned something, hold on, about $4.33 in gas. So he got less than two gallons. But what do I know? I wasn't there. Right? I don't, I'm agreeing here. I don't think they should call her as a witness because she could provide fake statement. And that could be throw the whole case out. I really don't think they should call her as a witness. Right? Now, this is the one we're watching out, the one they're all on about. So much more information. The ex on lady is simply not telling the truth, and she knows by now for sure that he was not there. Right, we will go back to this. So just keep that in mind, okay? The, like a little bit around his neck. I think he had a t-shirt on. He didn't have a tank top. Did you by chance see his hands? Yeah. But I really didn't pay that much attention. Oh, I wonder were any scratches on his body, on his neck, his chest, his arms, his hands. He did he have on a long sleeve shirt? No, I don't think so. Did he say anything to your recollection? Just whatever he was getting, you know. Uh, I it's four thirty three and gas is keep sticking in my head. Okay, so four thirty three and gas. At that time, you noticed him and you, you remembered him because because of his eyes and his tattoos. And what happened next? He leaves. You don't think any more about it until when? Till I saw him on the on the on Facebook the next morning. What did you say? His his mug shot. Saying if you'd seen him, he was the last seen with Audrey. If uh, had if you had seen him, uh, please call. And so I did. Would it concern you if he gets out on bond? If he's walking free? Yes. Why? Yes, definitely. Yes, because he's dangerous. He's he's not getting out on bond. I've seen it. I've seen the paperwork. He's not getting out on bond. Is a um, murder in whatever, right? Which is a death penalty case. He's not getting out on bond. I'm sorry. I'm just eating a bit of chocolate. Uh, he's not getting out on bond. So don't worry. He's not getting out. And if he does, then I want to know how. Because on the form that I've seen, it says no bond. So if you've got no bond, it means you're not getting out. Crazy. And he you're a witness. Need to be out. Did you yeah. have, did you ever meet or see Audrey or her father or mother or grandparents? I know my daughter is friends with Audrey's mother. And we've known Audrey when she was smaller, but not seen her here recently. Why wasn't the mother living with her? I have no idea. I have no idea. Because it sounds like to me, uh, she was in a worse situation than if she would have been with her mother. You so know? does the mother live in town there? She lives in uh, Livingston, I believe. Okay, with a population of a little over. Because 
the grandmother has some money to fight in court. She, the mother doesn't. I don't know why she lost custody. It doesn't say. I'll find out more on that. 5,000 people. How far away could it be? Um, yeah. Did you know her dad? No, I do not know him. Do you know how the dad knows the perpetrator? Um, friends, um, if you look on their face on his Facebook, they have uh, he's been tagged in posts of the dads for years. It looks like you are hearing the voice of Leslie Gaskins, the Exxon employee who saw the suspect of the morning on the morning that Audrey goes missing and called police. Miss Gaskins. Thank you. I hope you are prepared to testify. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. I, I hope not because the cameras in the store did not show him there. So you can't beat camera evidence. You cannot. There's one I've been going somewhere, which they got him on camera. But I don't think it was that store. Because as you said, there's a queue. Now, you never saw him in a queue. You just see him come in and go straight to the counter on this one video clip of it. So, I hope she doesn't because... I will do my part. He shouldn't have never been out anyway, not with his rap sheet. He should have never been out. Ms. Gaskins, thank you so much. Uh, joining us now, an all-star panel to make sense of what we know right now, but overnight, this is what we learn. Listen. According to court documents, Don Stephen McDougal used a rope consistent with a rope seen in his vehicle two days earlier during a police traffic stop to tie a large rock to the body of Audrey Cunningham to weigh it down in the Trinity River. Investigators were able to locate the body of Audrey Cunningham in the Trinity River by using cell phone records and video analysis, but they also needed help from the Trinity River Authority to lower the level of the water on the river so divers could find Audrey. After removing her body from the Trinity River, Sheriff Byron Lyons said she was taken to the Harris County Medical Examiner's Office in Houston to determine the cause of death. Joining us, joining us an all-star panel, but first to Bob Price. We did the river lower because team from Excusers had found the, uh, something the day before, but couldn't definitely say it was her or not. It just seemed something floating about in the water. And on the side, on the bank, he found, we noticed a, bear, a pair of pants. That's why he was searching around a certain area by the bridge. And so that's why they got the water lowered, so they could get a bit, better view of what they were looking at. And so the divers could go down and see. You'll hear it all later on in this one. Joining us, associate editor, senior news contributor, Breitbart, Texas. Bob, thank you for being with us. Tell me about the rock that was used to weight down this 11-year-old girl's body. So, Nancy, I had, had suspe suspected that he had used some kind of a weight or device to tie her down. I asked Sheriff Lyons about that during the, the press conference on uh, Tuesday when they announced that uh, they had found her body. And at that time, he did not want to disclose the information as to what he had used to weigh her down, but he did not deny uh, that she had been held underwater by some type of, of apparatus and stuff. So now we know that there was a rope used, a rope that was seen in his vehicle two days before during a traffic stop, which again, reemphasized. Which forensics can match that rope with the rope in his car. They can match it strand by strand. They will know if it's come from the same batch, the same. They don't even know where they brought the rope from. 
black tie forensic sees. Sizes that the avoidability of this tragedy had there been an arrest warrant for for Mr. McDougall on an aggravated assault where he stabbed an individual back in August and was identified by the victim as as the attacker in this assault, there would have been a warrant for him during that traffic stop and he would have been in jail two days before her death. You know what? I've been uh, torturing myself all night long about coulda, shoulda, woulda. We have been looking at the affidavit attached to the warrant and gleaning information about the death of this 11-year-old girl and what was transpiring during the time after daddy leaves the house and the defendant is there alone with the little girl. Joining us right now, Tim Miller, the founder of Texas EquiSearch, who actually went and searched searching the waterways trying now this is where you want to really listen to this guy Tim he's the only he's the uh, organizer of Ecclesers Ecclesers all free it's all wrong on donations so he's listen to what he has to say I defined Audrey Tim Miller, thanks for being with us. You've done so many water searches. Tell me about this search and the discovery of her body. When you were using sonar, looking through the water there, which is has a pretty good current, but could you tell at that time she was weighted down? Well, Nancy, when we got involved in that, the sheriff actually called me Friday and said he needed our help. And we had many, many ground searches. Saturday, we found something right along the shoreline, which ended up as being evidence. So where that was found, I decided I need to start okay, going there. Why are you talking about the kitty backpack? Uh, no, something else. Not no. Now, this is where the new evidence is coming out. This is all new. We didn't know about this until now. The backpack. What? We found we found something right at the edge of the river. I don't want to disclose that now. Was it a shoe? Was it clothing? Uh, it was clothing. Now, if the clothing was found on the bank where they found her, well, I'm sorry, she wasn't, she couldn't have been dumped up the, put in the river five miles up and, fl and just pulled down by the river. He had to have put her in the river by the bridge for her clothing to be by that side. So I decided I wanted to start was it all, there. Was it a girl's clothing? Yes, ma'am. And, and it definitely is evidence. It 100% is evidence. I mean, so hold on we... just a second. Hold on just a second. Jordan me director of victim services there in texas joining me out of houston andy Kahn, longtime colleague andy the girl's yep. clothing he obviously the girl was sex assaulted that why would she not have clothing on why would her clothing be separate from her body i mean this you guy know. this guy needs to be on death row it's not the first time andy what in the hay is going on in texas this guy had offense after offense after offense and now i'm hearing from tim miller article of clothing found at the edge of the river and tim miller who by the way is a crime victim himself his daughter was murdered it's out there and sees this. What what is going on? You know, Nancy, there's a reason we have the death penalty in the state of Texas. And McDougal is now the poster boy why we have uh -uh. the death penalty. No, no, no. You can blow your horn about Texas injustice, but why was this guy had you why was he out free? He had already crawled in between the sheets with another little girl. Go, girl. You get them, Nancy. 
when taking off her underwear and PJs. He's got one offense after the next, after the next, after the next. The man is using meth for Pete's sake. The Nazi I mean, tattoo alone should have gotten him kicked off the property. That didn't work. But that said, don't start preaching to me about Texas as a death penalty. I want to know what this guy's doing and walking around to start with. The state of Texas failed 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham. Thank you. We know that. We know you failed. The state of Texas failed Audrey Cunningham. We know. We don't need you to tell us. We could have told you that the first day. Blah, no blah, if, blah. Answer, but blah. The state of Texas failed this 10-year-old girl back in 2007, who he evidently... Yes, they did, because they should never have pleaded that case down to an enticement. That should never have been pleaded down. You failed that young girl, and you let him go free to assault. Other young girls, we do not know. We're just waiting for them to come forward. Because I'm sure that there are other young girls, or maybe in the 20s or in the teens now, who are brave enough to come forward. They will come forward, they just need to know that they will be listened to, and that this guy will go to their death row. Was trying to sexually assault, and he got a sweetheart deal. He got sweetheart deal. I didn't deal even know she was 10 years deal. old. I didn't know that had been made public. Um, yes, it is. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. We were trying to yes, protect her will, identity. No, she went. Yeah, Another 10 year old girl, yeah. very similar to girl. Audrey. Yeah. Correct. Very similar. Very yep. similar. And now <laughs> this. I mean, you know what, Andy Cullen? My dad. God rest your soul, Daddy. What a this is what makes me think this was not the first, not the second case. How many other people does he has he met? Families, right? Who he's made friends with? Who's got young girls? You know what I mean? How many? Kill this guy if he had tried to get in bed with me or my sister or brother. I don't understand why he got a cheap plea deal. And on the cheap plea deal, plea deal Andy Khan, he didn't even say, I'm guilty. They let him plead, plead no low contendere. He wouldn't even no. admit what he did. I mean, talk about a sweet <laughs> deal. Jada, I'll take it back. He didn't even have to plead guilty. Hold on. To sexually assault, and he got a sweetheart deal. He got sweetheart deal. I didn't deal even know she was 10 deal. years old. I didn't know that had been made public. Um, yes, it is. I'm looking at it right now. We were trying to yes, protect her. I, she come out of South. She come out yes, Another 10-year-old girl, yeah. very similar girl. to Audrey. Correct. Very yep. similar. And now this. I mean, you know what, Andy Cullen? My dad... God rest your soul, Daddy. That was the little girl who we seeing on the video who he pulled out her cousin out the bed, got in bed with her, pulled down her pajama bottoms and everything, and she managed to fight him off. And he was pleaded down, down and down and down to an enticement, which meant he didn't have to be on the registry. They let that Young girl down as well. Would have killed this guy if he had tried to get in bed with me or my sister or brother. I don't understand why he got a cheap plea deal. And on the cheap plea deal, plea deal, Andy Khan. Listen to this. Listen to this again very carefully. He didn't even say, I'm guilty. They let him plead, plead no love contendere. He wouldn't even no. admit what he did. I mean, talk about a sweet <laughs> deal. Texas Justice yep. Librarian. Then they cut it down to enticing a child, which isn't even an offense that you have to register for. And that brings us to what we're going to be doing next legislative session. 
and I made a promise, and I'm going to continue their promise. That we oh, yeah, and it's going to be called all grief. We are Please, going to you know, bring I, I, a bill. You think I trust a bunch of politicians in a room together? No. You, I mean, I, I trust you, Andy. I, I know you're going to do the right thing. Yeah, and okay, I'm going to make I get it happen. To legislation, let me guess, it's going to be called Audrey's Law. Yeah, it will. And I agree with what she said, because we shouldn't have to have these young children dying. Dying, being took away from us, being wiped off the earth. We shouldn't have that happening for them for a law to come into place. These laws should be put. Oh, God, I can't tell you how angry this makes me. Yep, unfortunately, That's right. you I don't know. want the child dead so she can have a law named after her. I want her alive. I can't have what I want. Now the only thing I can get is a death penalty. That's that's the only thing we can work towards now. But that said, you can tell me about your legislation later. And don't worry. I respect what you're doing. I value what you're doing. I want you to do it. But I guarantee you, if you leave one little crack in that legislation, some defense attorney is going to find a way around it so it won't apply to their client. Think about that. Tim Miller, can I get back to the search? Yep. I, you just got me so upset thinking about her being separated from her clothes. Now, I don't know what piece of clothing it is. It could have been a shirt. It could have been her pants. It could have been her underwear. But when you said it's definitely evidence, that makes me think it could have been her underwear. Well, it was definitely clothing. And it's definitely hers. So I decided to start doing side Was it her pants? Down. Uh, yeah. Why does an 11 year old girl not have her pants on? He raped her. He raped her. This animal raped this 11 year old girl. Because the pants wouldn't be on the side yet. Okay, back to the search. Guys, when we're talking about sonar, think about uh, you've seen, if you haven't gone fishing yourself, you've seen it on the fishing channel. You can't miss that. It's 24 7, 365. People are fishing. It looks like um, a blurry iPad screen. They even have them you can hold in your hand the size of a cell phone. And it looks gray, but then you can see black spots. Some are a lot more sophisticated, but those spots are objects in the water. Now, Tim Miller has state of the art. Okay, tell me what happened to him. Well, I started sonar in that area, and of course, the river was dry, the current was strong, and it's like, oh my God, is she going to wash away or what? Sunday, I got what well, I what thought was. What did you see that made you know it was Audrey? Well, on, the, on Sunday when I sonar, I didn't know if it was Audrey. The conditions were the worst you could ever imagine with sonar. So I went back to the same exact spot and the image I got, I couldn't get it again. I couldn't get it again. I literally went through that area more than 80 times. And then I got another image and I said, oh my God. I said, I could make out legs and Now hold arms. on, Tim Miller. You know we don't say OMG on CS Crime Stories. But go ahead. What so, did it uh, look like, Tim Miller? How could you tell that it was... I a child I, versus something else. No, I, I could make out the body. So I went, and, and but it wasn't as People like Tim who work on the sofa, on the waters, they have seen, seen and found so many bodies that they know now what they are looking for. They know instinctively, straight away, they know what is a body and what is just a rock or rubbish, you know what I mean? They know. Clear because of the currents, because of where it was, it was difficult at best so that I kept sonar and sonar. And then Monday I sonar again. Tim, and what got went through your mind when you spotted that? You must have just 
fucking sick to you. I know it was. I knew it was her, but I couldn't repeat it. And it's like, how come it, if there's something there, it's got to stay there? And so I got with the divers on Monday and the Texas Rangers. I showed them. Did and you go down yourself? The, the, no, I didn't dive it. You know, I don't even take a bath, but I'm pretty good at sonar. <laughs> but Let me ask you a question. I, so this, you guys are diving in a, a fast current in the river, correct? Well, on Monday, when I showed them the image and we all got together, they said, oh, my God, it, 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 I think you're right. I think it's a body. We have to die about it. Well, the currents were so strong and the river was high that they could never get to that image. So then they decided to shut the That's dam. That's hard, man. But I've done dives in fast currents in rivers, and it's it's not like on TV. It's really hard to do that much less to get was she all the way down at the bottom because of the rock well she was doing that in our way is that she was high i'm sorry so what she now was, she was what she was she was tied onto the rope and at the other end of the rope was a rock yeah and so then her body or was, was the just, rock on her body and tied to her body oh no it was on a rope okay question so oh, yes. the body, Audrey's body was not on the bottom of the river, on the riverbed. It, the rock was on the riverbed, and she was in the water. She was in the water. And so she was just swirling and swirling in there, and that's why I could never pick that same image up at the same exact spot. But I'm going to tell you the best thing he did, Nancy. The best thing he did was tie her off and weight her down. Because if he wouldn't have done that, and she would have floated, that current going four miles an hour in, in 24 hours, she would have been 96 miles away. Just like Natalie so the, Holloway would never find the, her. Best, the best thing he did for the search efforts was to go ahead and wait her down. Otherwise, again, in that current, and it, just think that she would have popped up at night when nobody was there yeah see their equipment they use tells them the speed the speed of the current the depth of the water everything everything you need to know about the water it will tell it tells you in 12 hours she would have been 50 miles away so you, you know it, it was a blessing in disguise so uh yeah, when I got that image again, they dove on Monday. They could not even get to it because of the currents. They decided to shut the dam, let the water go down, and the next day when I was got, got in there, they, they found her. Tim, what do you mean when you say she was swirling and swirling? Well, if you can imagine in a current, and there's a big swale there, it's just in the railroad bridge and 59 south bridge which is close together so the water coming around them pilings and stuff just created a huge eddy so she was down there just basically almost going in circles and moving around and moving around and and uh and that's why it was so hard to get her at the very same location because when a body uh at the bottom that's going to stay at the bottom until it starts gassing up and, and then it'll start moving. So I would go back to the same exact spot and she wasn't there. I'd, I'd go again and then get it located in another area and, and she would, she was just moving. She was just moving, moving around. And I, I anticipate if she wouldn't have been found, of course, she would have never floated. And as bad as it sounds, the fish life and turtles and stuff would have, you know, would have just ate that body and, and she would have been found. So it was, it, you know, it was a huge effort with everybody. And you know what, Nancy? God just put us in the right place at the right time. Tim, um, Nancy, Nancy, I feel your pain. I'm with you here, girl. It's really hard. 
but it has to be said, and the other one to do it. They're taking off her underwear and PJ bottoms. Now he has access to Audrey, and now Audrey is dead at the bottom panel to make sense of the evidence as we know it right now. This lady is a hero. The lady that called police when she yeah. spotted that's not. Why is it going back today? Blue and they're mm -hmm. piercing. Ow. Ms. Gaskins, thank you so much. Uh, joining us now, an all-star panel to make but suspected that he had used some kind of a weight or device to tie her down. I asked Sheriff Lyons about that during the, the press conference on uh, Tuesday when they announced that uh, they had found her body. And at that time, he did not want to disclose the information as to what he had used to weigh her down, but he did not deny uh, that she had been held underwater by some type of, of apparatus and stuff. So now we know that there was a rope used, a rope that was seen in his vehicle two days before during a traffic stop, which again reemphasizes that the avoidability of this tragedy, had there been an arrest warrant for, for Mr. McDougal on an aggravated assault where he stabbed an individual back in August and was identified by the victim as, as the attacker in this assault, there would have been a warrant for him during that traffic stop and he would have been in jail two days before her death. You know what? I've been uh, torturing myself all night long about coulda, shoulda, woulda. We have been looking at the affidavit attached to a warrant and gleaning information about the death of this 11-year-old girl and what was transpiring during the time after daddy leaves the house and the defendant is there alone with the little girl. Joining us right now, Tim Miller, the founder of Texas Equity. Her dad, her dad was at the house that night. Okay. And then went left early in the morning, obviously, to go to work because with the fishing, you have to get out there early. Okay. Search, who actually went and searched searching the waterways, trying to find Audrey. Tim Miller, thank you for being with us. You've done so many water searches. Tell me about this search and the discovery of her body. When you were using sonar, looking through the water there, which is has a pretty good current to it, could you tell at that time she was weighted down? Well, Nancy, when we got involved in that, the sheriff actually called me Friday and said he needed our help. And we had many, many ground searches. Saturday, we found something right along the shoreline, which... No, you can blow your horn about Texas and justice, but why was this guy... Why was he out free? He had already crawled in between the sheets with another little girl and taken off her underwear and PJs. He's got one offense after the next, after the next, after the next. And it looks gray, but then you can see black spots. Some are a lot more sophisticated, but those spots are objects in the water. Now, Tim Miller has state of the art. Okay, tell me what happened to him. Well, I started sonar in that area, and of course the river was high, the current was strong, and it's like, oh my God, is she going to wash away or what? Sunday, I got what and I what thought was. What did you see that made you know it was Audrey? Well, on on Sunday when I sonar, I didn't know if it was Audrey. The conditions were the worst you could ever imagine. It was sonar. So I went back to the same exact spot and the image I got, I couldn't get it again. I couldn't get it again. I literally went through that area more than 80 times. And then I got an, another image and I said, oh my God. I said, I could make out legs and Now arms. hold on, Tim Miller. You know we don't say OMG on CES Crime Stories. But go ahead. What so, did you uh, 
Oh. It looked like Tim Miller. How could you tell that it was that? And she would have floated. That current going four miles an hour in, in 24 hours, she would have been 96 miles away. Just like now so in the hallway. We'd never find the her. Best, the best thing he did for the search efforts was to go ahead and wait it out. Otherwise, again, in that current, and I just think that she would have popped up at night when nobody was there. And in 12 hours, she would have been 50 miles away. So, you know, it was a blessing in disguise. So, uh, yeah, when I got that image again, they dove on Monday. They could not even get to it because of the currents. They decided to shut the dam, let the water go down. And the next day, the divers got, got in there. They, they found her. Tim, what do you mean when you say she was swirling and swirling? Well, if you can imagine in a current, and there's a big swale there, it's between the railroad bridge and 59 South Bridge, which is close together. So the water coming around them pilings and stuff just created a huge eddy. So she was down there just basically almost going in circles and moving around and moving around. And, and, uh, and that's why it was so hard to get her at the very same location. Because when a body keeps showing these uh, at the bottom, it's going to stay at the bottom until it starts gassing up and, and then it'll start moving. So I would go back to the same exact spot and she wasn't there. I'd, I'd go again and then get it located in another area and, and she would, she was just moving. She was just moving around. And, I, I anticipate if she wouldn't have been found, of course, she would have never floated. And as bad as it sounds, the fish life and turtles and stuff would have, yeah. you know, would have just ate that body and, and she would have been found. So it was, it, you know, it was a huge effort with everybody. And you know what, Nancy? God just put us in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Composure. Uh, um, not everyone knows that you lost your daughter. So when you get a case like this, what does it mean to you that you found Audrey? You're the one that spotted her on so much. If that was me, it would mean I couldn't have my daughter. But I can help others. I can help others. I couldn't be there for my daughter, but I can be there for you, others. Well, you, you may get me a little bit choked up right now. But when I got home, I said, Laura, thank you. Just thank you. Because if you were still alive, I wouldn't be doing this. I said, thank you, Laura. Yeah. Because you're alive, you wouldn't be doing this. That's right. I'm, I'm not saying this to pat my in the back there's no ego involved in it again i've just been blessed with my god with the, you know what he's given me and and, and i'm pretty good at that sonar i'm not an expert but Tim, when I got you, that, like i feel it's like every time he gets in a boat to go out on the water it's like his daughter who dies is guiding him to the spot. That's how I feel. You don't have to pat your own back. If it had not been for you spotting her on the sonar, she could have come loose from that rope and she would have been gone. Like you said, in 12 hours, she'd be 50 miles away. Yeah. We would never have the answer to what happened to Audrey Cunningham. And this savage this brute would walk free to attack another child and you know another thing tim we know of these two little girls 110 111 very similar in physicality we don't know how many others are out there because you and i know tim miller that only one out of say eight or nine sex assault victims come forward 
and that is a conservative figure. You are hearing Tim Miller, my friend, my longtime colleague who runs Texas EquiSearch. Everybody on the panel, jump in. We got a lot to get through. First of all, to Joe Scott Morgan, renowned professor of forensics, joining us out of Jacksonville State University, author of Blood Beneath My Feet, book on Amazon, and star of a hit series, Body Bags. No, it's just too slow to be. In Texas, Atlanta, Shadwick.com. Atlanta, thank you for being with us. Have you read the affidavit? I've got a few things I uh, want to ask you about. This guy I is have. so full of crap because we hear police say, this is where you're going to come in, Lee Reber, uh, that they were able to place a defendant with the victim. Now, how? Through cell phone data, we know that. Through... Uh, yeah, because your phone will ping wherever you go. Criminals are stupid. They don't realize that. Other digital information and through information from him. But I am telling you right now, he was lying through his teeth. The information they likely got from him is from his cell phone. Because triangulation doesn't lie. Pings don't lie. This guy lied through his teeth. True. Your phone will give you away every time. And people just can't help but take their phones with them. They can't help you. It's automatic. You walk out the door, you pick your phone up, or you, whatever, you put it in your bag to go out. Your phone is one of the th one things you pick up when you go... Christ, when I go downstairs, I live in, on the 14th floor, right? When I go downstairs to take my rubbish down, my black bag, I've got my keys because I lock my flat up when I go out, go down. And I've got my phone. Why do I take my phone? Because my lift has been known to stop. And I've got stuck in it twice before. And... I've never had the phone on me. So now I always take my phone when I go downstairs. But if I've got to go on the lift, I take my phone. It's automatic. My phone is with me. Well, they've got him now. I mean, he's, he's at the bridge. Now? Yes, they've got him now. With cell phone data, the pings. I mean, you can lie all you want to, but you know, unfortunately, I mean, I mean, unfortunately, he tied her to a rock, and that's where the body was found. They're going to be able to um, ping his cell phone, get video uh, footage of that 2003 blue uh, suburban and placed him there. And now that vehicle is in the custody of law enforcement authorities. And you know they are combing it. You know, uh, I want you to look, Lana, at paragraph five. Affiant shall show through investigation. That's the cop. It's the affiant. Investigations were able to determine through cell phone data, video footage, and other forensic evidence that McDougal lied about his whereabouts and activities. He flat out they got lied. Him. Hey, yeah, and they a, got him. And another thing, take a look at our friend at Crime Online, Rachel Bonilla. According to KTRK, Don Stephen McDougal was seen in a Livingston mechanic shop near Highway 59 the day Audrey went missing. Workers at the shop said McDougal was filthy, covered in dirt and acting suspicious. He was there trying to get a part for his blue Chevy Suburban. So we know that he was completely filthy at a mechanic's shop. What about that, Lana? Filthy with what? Because he had been down there at the riverbank getting rid of a body? Yep. Well, absolutely. That's evidence of um, where he was um, beyond, you know, having cell phone pings and video footage. Now they've got him covered in... A lake river mud and so saying he's filthy 
So the guy's so smart, he doesn't even bother to clean up anything before he goes out to get a part for his car. Uh, I'm, I'm very been... curious um, about what we know regarding that video footage and the cell phone pings. Bob Price joining me, associate editor, senior news contributor, Breitbart, Texas. Bob, do you know that the pings absolutely place him on that bridge? Because based well, on what Tim that, Miller is saying, he didn't the... throw a body off a bridge. He went down on the riverbank. Right. And with the clothing found on the riverbank and not tangled up in the grass along the river's edge, uh, we, we know that he was up on that bank and probably placed her or pushed her into the water with that rock attached. Not only did the cell phone day to confirm that, though, he took the police to that location on Saturday and and said that that was one of the places that he'd been now he lied about some other things but he admitted that he was at that location well, now Bob, the interesting Bob, thing about him getting Bob, a cart please my dear sweet boy he only did that when they showed him hey your phone is pinging right here yeah oh sure probably he volunteered probably so, and lied to his teeth man so he was at this car shop getting parts for his car he went on facebook that day and started selling off a bunch of his personal belongings, he was planning to run at that point and inform. Holy cow, even after the report was put in about him missing, he was knocking on neighbors' doors, neighbors doors to see if they got any information, if they'd seen her. What a s bag. Fortunately, the police caught up with him before he had a chance to flee. Lee Reber is joining us out of New Alexandria, Virginia, mobile device forensic expert and CEO of Oxygen Forensics, Inc. He is the author of, listen to this, Mobile Forensic Investigations, and he's the host of a podcast, which is great, by the way, Forensic Happy Hour. Lee, Lee Reber, thank you for being with us. Lee, explain to me how much can I rely on pings? How accurate are they? Can they place him at that river bank? Um, hey, Tim Miller, how close were Audrey's pants to the bridge? Were they thrown from the bridge or would he have had to go down to the river bank? Had to go down to the river bank and, the, and it was actually in the water. So it was saturated with, with water. Uh-oh, Joe Scott Morgan's not going to like that because that could have gotten rid of any forensic evidence linking the defendant back to her pants. But that said, uh, I'll go back to you in a second, Joe Scott. Lee Reber, explain to me how accurate is the pinging process? Yeah, I think that, you know, if you look at the triangulation, I mean, that's, it could be accurate. It could be very accurate, but what I think is more important is the forensic evidence that's going to be from the device itself when they go and do the collection of that, because those are just GPS devices that could put you, I mean, a meter uh, to the location. So I think that utilizing, obviously identifying, being able to, you know, he's lying because of the location, but. I don't know, look, there's even, because I found this out in a case we had in the UK where they can, they've got an app where they can pick up cell phones right next to you. So you could be standing there talking to someone and they can ping off your phone. So they're looking for you or your phone. They can ping off your phone. But if someone goes near that phone, they can even ping, get their um, signal as well. They don't know who that phone belongs to. But I can get a signal from that phone right next to them. Once they have that device in their possession and do the processing of that, it's going to show. I mean, there might be photos, and the photos have uh, exit data. We could show location. Uh, they can have just a simple uh, 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 from the data that's on the device, any applications that were utilized, and showing GPS locations. So. I, I think the data from the device itself will, is, will be way more important than, than looking at, uh, say, the, the data from the towers. Quick question. Bob, Bob 
Price joining us, Breitbart. What year is this Perv's Chevy Suburban? So the sheriff announced that they were looking for information about this 2003 dark blue uh, Chevy Suburban that he was seen Got driving. Got it, 2003. To him. Okay, to Lee Reber, mobile device forensic expert, remember the Alex Murdoch trial? How much we learned from his NAV system? You could even tell, Lee, and you and I talked about this, you were awesome. When Murdoch got in his car, his SUV, to leave the scene of the double murder where he murdered his wife and son, the NAV system will even show him opening the car door, closing it, cranking up, putting the car in drive, driving, screeching out of the crime scene, slow, riding, driving like a bat out of hell, slowing down. It showed when he let his window down electronically, which I argue is when he threw Maggie Murdoch's cell phone out the window, let the window back up, and then hightailed it to his mother's house 28 miles away. It showed when he cranked back up, got back in, and went back to the crime scene and went, oh, dear Lord in heaven, my wife is son. Yep. They found all that information off his car. It's like another case that's going on. Uh, the answer. Um, so, um, oh, God. What's her case? Um, Summer Moon, Utah, Wells. Right? Her da- the father started using the Subaru or oh, one of these high-tech cars to go to work in. And his workmates were laughing at him because this is a nice car. And the work he did was messy work. Why would you bring your work gear into such a nice car and muck it all up? He used it so that he could have an alibi to say where he was at what time and what speed he was doing and where he was going at what time. That's why. Certain cars have all that on it. Under dead. Let me call 911. It was all a lie. But those NAV systems are amazing. Is there such a NAV system in a two NAV system in a 2003 Suburban? Well, the vehicle itself, I mean, uh, in 2004, uh, you know, or if you remember the OnStar system, you know, they had OnStar systems. I know the 2004 Chevy Suburban uh, has an OnStar. They all have computers with the NAV system. 2003. Uh, they, yeah, even in 2003, I'm just saying, and, you know, as old as 2003, we had OnStar uh, navigational systems that are running on all those opening doors. It, it'd be treasure trove along with the uh, data from the, the mobile device. They better get on that For subpoena sure. to Chevy right now. Because remember, at trial, all that evidence, they had asked for it long ahead of time. But they got it during the trial or right before the trial. The defense almost got to keep it out. Hey, word to the wise in Texas. Lana, Andy Kanye, you can pass this along. Get the NAV system information now. Bob Price, what can you tell me about text messages between Audrey's bio mom and McDougal? Apparently, he was offering for the two of them to meet stating that the little girl wanted to see her mom and coincidentally offering to meet at the spot by the river where the little girl was found. Yeah. So Audrey, I've seen some of those posted on social media and clearly he was trying to entice this mother uh, down to that river. Now that raises the question that about when is the actual time of death for Audrey, did did he do something to her the night before and was trying to get the mom down there to do something with her as well? You know, there's a lot of things that could come into play here, but clearly he was trying to meet up with her and using Audrey as bait, if you will, to get her down there to meet meet with and him. And he also, we know from what the, kept stressing, don't tell anybody. Quote: As long as no one says anything about it being set up, no one would even know, mm-hmm. and she, Audrey, wouldn't say anything. And, and that's you know, that's the MO that this guy has. He, he grooms people, family members, children, all of this. We know from what was said yesterday on the show that he assaulted a woman by groping her at a public party, a married woman, 
uh, just months before this. We know that he was at the birthday party of another 11-year-old child uh, just months before this happened. He's hanging around all of these types of people down there. This, this father is, has a criminal conviction for assault causing bodily injury. You know, maybe that's how they met somewhere. Are you saying but, Audrey's father has that conviction? Yes. So my speculation that they met in the penitentiary could be accurate. What's another thing that's very disturbing about these texts between Audrey's bio mom and the defendant, McDougal, is he is saying, I will take her to school and have you on the phone. I will take her to school tomorrow. This is Wednesday night. The next day is the day he was supposed to take her to school, but whoops, she ended up without her pants dead in the river. And he's talking to the mom the following morning, the day of the murders. Good morning. They're still planning to meet up with the girl. And he says, have you, he says to her, have you seen Audrey? I dropped her off at the bus and she didn't get on and hasn't gotten home. So he's lying in these texts to the mother, Bob. Yeah, if his lips are moving, he's he or his fingers are touching a keypad, he's lying. Yeah. And, and that's been consistent throughout this whole thing. Uh, this whole area, the, the people in the courthouse told me that there, there's 13 sex offenders that live within a, a very short radius of, of this house. Uh, this father and another father are exposing their children to these. 13 in that area oh my lord these types of people on a regular basis I and, got a and question putting these about children a photo in dangerous situations uh lana shadwick uh chris mcdonough joining us from the cold case foundation former homicide detective and host of the interview room on youtube I've seen photos of the dad who, according to Bob Price, has a conviction for assault. Was it ag assault or assault, Bob? Assault causing bodily injury and misdemeanor. Misdemeanor. Then they wouldn't have met in the pen. Maybe the county jail. Uh, but Lana and Chris, have you seen the photos of Audrey's dad with the defendant? They look like they're at some outing. They're both wearing the same kind of bra handmade bracelet. They're clearly big friends. Have you seen the photo? Yeah. Very panicky. Yes, I've seen the photos, Nancy. Yes. Chris McDonough, the photo is of the defendant McDougal and Audrey's dad, with whom she lived. They've got their arms around each other. All of his prison tattoos, his swastika, all that in plain view. They're hugging each other and they're shooting, it looks like, the AB, Aryan brother. Uh, but that said, they're wearing matching bracelets. What kind of bromance do those two have? You know, that photo is, is obviously pretty disturbing, uh, Nancy. And for this dirt bag, in order for the state of Texas to, quite frankly, hang a millstone around his neck and toss him into the sea, I, I think it's important not only that they look at what we call suspectology and kind of dissect what his past is, but I think this case is going to revolve and, and end up, you know, balancing out on whether or not that child was alive when she was put into that water, because that opens up a now an investigation into other potential crime scene locations. Why the house, do the you car. think it all hinges on whether she's dead or alive when she's thrown in the water? She's dead now. Because because you ha you have the like Dr. Morgan was talking about the chances of getting greater forensic and or circumstantial evidence to put this guy away uh, increase when you have crime scenes that you can actually collect that type. of of evidence like let's just use the cigarette butts for an example that he bought at the gas station where are those cigarette butts if he bought cigarettes uh where is you know his air filter is is there evidence within that air filter that place him underneath that bridge through you know bringing well, in got, you know, hold, a hold on please wait a minute sure chris mcdonough 
We have his pings placing him at the location where the child's body is found. We right. have him being the last one with her. Right. We have him and, standing and that's all great and had her in the car. So what did she do? Go tie a rock around her waist and throw herself off the bridge? No, no but that's all great evidence. right now to convict him. Are you kidding me? You think we yeah, can't no, prove totally this agree. case without <clears throat> DNA? We can. DNA is just icing like on the cake. Fight? What? Nancy, how would we? I know if I put a package in front of you in court, you would shred this guy. But how would you love to find semen in his truck where maybe that's where the sexual assault took place? Or and maybe we on find her DNA. clothing? Have you thought of Joe Scott? Yeah, we, both. We, we stopped at the body. What about his clothing? Well, you don't think there's any fibers from her on his clothing? No epithelial cells, no blood, no nothing. Hair. That, hair, anything. What about it, Joe Scott? Help me out, brother. <laughs> it's possible that you could. Here's here's the problem. As admitted earlier, uh, you were talking, uh, one of the guests had mentioned how filthy he was and encrusted with all of this dirt. Um, but yet he and... was clean at the gas station. Interesting. Go ahead. <laughs> So we don't know what the status of the clothing are. Uh, is it possible that they could collect something from her, from this precious little angel that may have made its way onto him? Yes, that's within the realm of possibility. But we don't know how much due care was taken with those clothing if, in fact, they have collected those clothing from him or from wherever oh, he was domiciled at the time. Got something. What about the rope? The rope. I mean, Lana Shadwick, you're the high-profile lawyer. Even a well, trash bag can be traced back yeah. to the lot, the, the group of trash bags that were created, yeah, manufactured. At what point? All she goes on about is like the forensic, like matching up, like how you can match up a black bag to a roll of black bag by the edging and all that lot. So yes, you can match up that rope with that rope in the back of the car if it's still there. Right? If that rope is still there. If not, have a look around where we lived. Could it be in the uh, shop in the shall I think you lived in? Right? The caravan, whatever it was. But they can match the fibers up to that, from the rope around her to the rope in his car. They can match that up. They can find fibers being out on her tongue. But like he said before, unless it's blood, hair could transfer easily onto him. Because she's been in his car before. She he's been in the home with her. You know what I mean? So it could be any reason for that hair being on him. So but I think they've got enough with the pings off his phone. Uh, videos. I think they've got maybe some car cam. Because surely someone going over that bridge, either way, south or north, will just see him. Either going south and then coming north or whatever, seeing him on their cam. You know what I mean? Everyone has those cams now on their, on their cars. For insurance reasons as well you know what i mean especially lorry drivers you know if you've got a lorry driver going along perhaps a lorry driver's picked his van up you know what i mean it could be anyone but the picture they keep showing you there on the map is not the right bridge the bridge they found it was five miles down the river it was that they where there's two, like two bridges one going north one going south and I think there's a train one as well, a little, or another road, a little bit down. So that's why she was swirling around in the water because the current was coming down that fast and hitting those pylons from the bridge. It, she's just swirling around on the rope. And it's not nice to say, it's not nice to hear. But as he said, he did us a favour by tying her to the rock. 
because if he had it, we'd have never found her body. We'd have another harmony, harmony on our case. We would never have found the body. You know what I mean? She's probably washed up somewhere, bones or whatever. Someone might have found her 50, 60 miles down the road, but by then, evidence would have been gone. Because as I said, you've got the turtles, you've got the fish, they'd all have been nibbling at her. In that short time in the water, they could have, she could have some um, damage to her body through the, uh, the life of the fishes and everything in the water. But the only reason he's, uh, he's seen that was because he's seen that clothing on the side. So he knew that's why he was searching around that area. And that's when he found, he apparently found her on the Monday. Or was it the Sunday? Sunday or something like that. Or Monday. But they couldn't get to her because the river was too high. They had to lower the water and get the speed of the water down. So they could actually pinpoint her and get her out. But as I said, those, they, the equipment he uses is so high tech and they know now what they're looking at. People who've done this sort of work day in, day out for years know exactly what they see now in the water. They know what is a rock, what is uh, seaweed and what is a body. They know the difference. They've done it all for years and he's started doing this. Team started doing it after his daughter was killed. So it's like he goes out there every time because of his daughter. If it wasn't for his daughter, he wouldn't be doing this. It's a shame that he's, he's doing it. He's had to lose his daughter for him to do this. But I always say to myself, I was so, always said to myself while listening to that, every time he gets in that boat, it's like his daughter is guiding him to that place where the body was. So anyway, we're going to have to leave it there because I've been on here three hours, 15 minutes. So I'll take that off the screen. Um, what's that now? We don't need that now. That can close. That can close. That can close. Oh, I'll tell you one more thing. She, the cause of her death was through traumatic blunt, traumatic blunt trauma to the head. So she'd been hit over the head with something. Someone did say earlier, I heard someone say earlier, it wouldn't surprise me if he hit her with that rock, which is she was tied to. But I don't think so. I think, I don't know. Perhaps he'd gone down there on the floor play of saying, we're going to meet your mum here. You know what I mean? And that's why you got her down. I really think he was going to set the mother up. Because if the mother turned up that day, she'd have been in the spot, feet away from her daughter who would have been in the water. It would have been pinging on her phone that she was there and he could and it would have set her up for the murder. You know what I mean? He's sick in the head in a way, but he also knew what he was doing because he's so 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 hard trying to get that mother down there. But she wasn't falling for it, she knew there was a setup. Because even the mother's partner tried getting in touch with the father. Because Cassie's father had blocked the mother on all accounts. Facebook, you name it, he blocked her. So she couldn't get in touch with the father, but the, her partner tried to get in touch with the father. 
You know what I mean? Just to let him know what was going on. What this Stephen guy was doing. Because the Marvel was getting... Was collecting all this evidence together. To, so she could go back to court. And say, this is what's going on. And get her daughter back. I heard that she had got custody of her, but then he kidnapped her. And because his mother's got the money to fight in court, she lost. Don't know who that is. Just a rumor I heard. But I really do believe he's trying, that Stephen Guy was trying to set the mother up. So, I hope you can get through this, okay? But now we know the truth. We know what sort of guy he was. We know how Texas let those two girls down. One in 2007 and another one and all on an old way. How do you know there aren't ever young girls? They were too scared still to come forward. Too scared to even mention it to their parents. You know what I mean? We don't. But I can assure you there are others out there. It wouldn't just be that young girl in 2007 and then Audrey. No. No. Don't believe that. Well, I mean it. Anyway. I thank you all for being here. I am back again later on Elijah Vu. Uh, Elijah I'm an update on that. But that's about 10 o'clock tonight, which is about uh, six, six, 5 or 6 p.m. 5 or 6 p.m. your time in the USA, wherever you are. But 10 o'clock tonight, I am back. And I'm not on for long, I'm only going to do a short one this one, because 10 o'clock when I'm coming back on. But I just want to have a break now and do some of my diamond art. Right, so I thank you all for being here. Have a good day. Bye.